Florida and Tennessee. The Gators have won the last five, 16 of the last 17. Tennessee is tired of hearing that statistic, but there it is. This is only the sixth time they've ever checkered Neyland. And that hasn't gone too well either. One and four in the previous five. Nice day. We had a few sprinkles earlier this morning, but right now 74. And we're ready to go. This used to be and still is many times called the third Saturday in September. This rivalry its actually the fourth Saturday in September this time around. Florida won the toss, elected to take the ball first. They'd love to have about a seven minute drive and keep it out of Tennessee's offensive hands. Here we go. This one is returnable from the goal line. Jason Marshall bringing it out for the Gators and only got to the 16 yard line. Take a look at our Papa John starting lineup. And it all starts with a guy Gary just talked about, Anthony Richardson. So far, one great game against Utah, two not so good in the last two weeks. The rest of the offense joins him. And Montrell Johnson will be a big part of the ground game today, coming off a 100-yard effort a week ago in their win over South Florida. First snap from the 16. I know what I'd do. I'd run him as soon as I could, get Anthony Richardson into the flow of the game with a run. And a quick slant and a first down. I'll give you some confidence, well, too. The RPO started out. He made the read exactly like he should. The offense said, we're going to let you make a decision, and he made the right decision and executed it. Ripped it to shorter across the middle out to the 30. First down there. Now it's Naquan Wright, and he's dropped for a loss. The defense for Tennessee only giving up 83 yards a game on the ground. Trayvon Flowers, one of the great safeties in college football. Had a career high 15 tackles last year in this game. They prefer he didn't have to make that many today. Second down and 12. On the RPO, Richardson has time and now running out of it, and he's going to throw it to the sideline. He had time, but that Tennessee secondary reacted and closed all the avenues to throw. A little quick tempo by Florida. Play action pass, but look at nobody, no space. So we can say what we want about the quarterback, and he has missed some easy throws. Right. I'll get that. But on that one, his receivers gave him nothing. And he was getting some heat from Omari Thomas on the defensive front for Tennessee. Florida didn't want to find themselves in the third and long right off the bat, but they do. Richardson. This time he will run. And he's going to be short of the first down by about a yard. Got it to the 39, needed to get to the 40. So the early tackle for the loss, and that's one of the key stats that this Tennessee defense does well. Put the Gators into the long yard of situation. The scramble didn't make it. Do they go for this? They do. And I don't know. It's really close. Whoa. Just needed to get it to the 40, and I think he got it, but it's not by much. Stuffed up pretty good, but just a fall forward. Was it enough or not? I they already moved tell. the chains. Yeah. Well, the replay officials, where they look at this, because he doesn't go much past that line, but he looked like he did get past the 40-yard line. So first down on a big-time fourth down gamble. They're four out of six now in the season on fourth down conversions. Now they're going to look at it, aren't they? It's going to be interesting because the chains have already been moved. Well, they can move them back. <laughs> yeah, <I'm pretty laughs> they sure. go both ways. Yeah, they do. <laughs> there is no replay on the field. First down. All right. They've looked at it. They... And the truck is telling us that was an accidental buzz down that they had already determined it was a first down. And so first and 10 for the Gators. 
just across the 40 yard line. Montrell Johnson in there flanking Richardson. He'll get the call and Montrell goes for about three before Garland made the stop on the defensive front. So we had the long scramble on third down third and long and then the sneak was stuffed to begin with and then one push from behind by right yep. is what did it right. And Naquan should have got part of that. <laughs> exactly. Second down and seven from the 43 and this time Richardson pulls it out keeps it himself going to be close to another first down. In fact on the tackle by Tank McCullough I think Richardson might have still been on his back and rolled forward. Yeah that's what he said he looked around and goes nobody got me down this is a zone read keeper following the block that time by Zanders. Does he go down. Oh yeah I think his left knee was down. Good call. So they've. Moved it about the length of the football into the Tennessee end of the field. Richardson throwing on the run, got it out in the flat complete. Henderson, Xavier Henderson, and he's all the way down to the 30 yard line. So Florida's got something going here on their opening drive. So Billy Napier took the gamble and went for it on fourth down. And it's produced the drive they want, as Ness told you early. They'd love one of those six, seven minute drives. And now they're already they're on eight plays in this drive. 22 yard pickup to the 28 yard line. First year head coach Billy Napier. And they love the balance, too. Four first downs, two running, and two passing. Quick sidearm throw. What's dangerous out there? <laughs> that surprised Xavier Henderson that time. That's one of those decisions. The quarterback, it's a run play called in the huddle, but if he sees the numbers, he can throw it to the outside. Xavier Henderson said, I might have counted wrong. Sorry. <laughs> Did have one blocker out there, Dante Xanders, but incomplete, second down of 10. It's been a long time since they've had a touchdown pass. 301 days. And only about a yard gain on that one. Yeah, see, that's what the Tennessee defense is going to early in this game send the message. The running backs for Florida have been their weapon in yep. the run game. They're going to say, we're going to challenge you to throw the ball and run your quarterback. We do not want those running backs to be hurting us early in this game. They picked up a third and 12 earlier in this drive. They got third down and nine here. Let's see if they spy anyone to help on the quarterback scramble. It helped them last time on third down. They didn't have anybody looking for the quarterback. Four receiver group two to each side for Richardson in the pistol. They will keep it on the ground on third and long and they're not going to get it but they're about a yard and a half shy. Another decision here. Maybe. Fourth and a yard. Do they take points or do they say we're going to try to pick it up on fourth down. I think coach Napier said let's go. We did it once. Let's do it again. I mentioned on the season they tried it six times. They've been successful four times including. Earlier in this drive, but this one's a little bit longer. Almost two to go on fourth down. Now you're going to hear the crowd. He's practically giving up three points to eat the clock for seven points. Let's see if it works out. Tight ends on both sides. Richardson's all by himself in the backfield. He'll keep it. Trying to break tackles. He's got going to get it. Lost a yard. Tennessee will take over on downs. Ness, you said. I was here for a lot of them. My very first game, Florida, Tennessee, was Tim Tebow's first game. And fourth and short, he made them all that night. Well, he's got number 15, but he's not making it that day like Tebow did. Here's another look from ground level. Tennessee's defense finally stiffens at the last moment on fourth down, and their offense will take over when we come back. No score through the first five minutes in Knoxville as we check our Papa John starting lineups as Tennessee takes over with that guy at the controls and in hooker his second year in the program and having a marvelous season so far with his 
group of receivers like Jalen Hyatt, who's going to have to carry a big load. 166 yards and two touchdowns, both career highs last week. And if you didn't see the opening of the game, Cedric Tillman, his other favorite target, if you will, out with an injury today. So that guy and the rest of the wideouts will have to fill his void. At the 21, first snap for the Volunteers. Quick throw, and it's complete to the aforementioned Jalen Hyatt defensively for Florida. This guy's going to have to put some pressure on Hendon Hooker today. And he's done a fine job of that so far through the three games this year. Really came on last season, ended the year with eight and a half sacks. Bretton Cox, four yard pickup on the first snap, and whistles blow before second down. I think that the Tennessee receivers moved early that time. It's going to be second around 10, 11. Full start, offense, number 88, five yard penalty. Second down. Fant, the tight end, the guy that moved. I think it was up right in the, the slot. Right there, yep. yes. He did. Never got set, did he? Nope. That's part the quarterback's job to make sure after a shift, everybody is set. Hooker. Gonna run with it. Little high step move. About 18 yard pickup. Nice run. Well, in the one win here, it was the Josh Dobbs game when he actually did this. He beat the pass rush, rushed for about 80 yards in that game. When you're going to have a spread offense, you need that quarterback to be a runner. On the RPO, downfield and complete again to Jalen Hyatt. All the way near the 41 yard line. Yeah, I say you need him to be a runner, but first of all, you got to get him to be a passer on this time. Can't get any more open than that. And he put it right above the face mask, just like you're supposed to do it. So Hyatt picking up where he left off last week. Gets it to the 41. <laughs> Straight drop this time, late pressure, high throw. Could have been caught by Hyatt. And. Hooker, they finally got some heat on him right as he let go of the ball. I, I don't know if it was late pressure. It was coming, and he had to get rid of that ball. A little bit of a delayed blitz, yep. but he was coming hard. Ventrell Miller coming inside. Good that he's playing kind of a quarterback of the defense. He's been nicked all year. Moving Brenton Cox around, by the way, he's now on the left side over here of the yard. And we got motion again. And flag down. You saw that graphic. They haven't scored on an opening drive against Florida since 2009. Full start. Offense. On the 76. Five yard penalty. Second down. Spragan's the right guard. The guy that moved. He's tilted out a bit, looking to his right. Yeah. I don't know if it was him or not. No, I actually did think it was Mincy, number 50. I do too. At any rate, they walk it back to the 46. Florida almost jumped there. Now, now Tennessee could have reacted and caused the five yards. They did not, so allowed them to get back on their, defense. Their only reaction was to look to the sideline for the play, and now here goes the quarterback, Hendon Hooker, again. Got it down to the 33-yard line. See, Josh Heupel loves all of that play. Your quarterback being an athlete, not there run he likes it he likes it he doesn't like it right at the end when he doesn't slide he's gonna like that one too first down Ooh, big hit though went down hard but he's okay pops right up at the 25 as they go with their tempo yes and that is a staple of this offense they're one of the fastest teams in college football running plays hooker throws the out the 20 and the ball is out as well and florida's got it Complete to the tight end, and then he coughed it up. I think it was Fant again, number 88, a delay to the outside. They call it a smash route, and it was punched loose by Miller, number 51, coming across. And that's a new thing. You see it in the end of it. You see his left hand? He actually made a fist and punched that ball out, and he landed right on the nose. And Clemson holds on, Ness. Wow, great game. Here we're scoreless. As Florida's taken over, 
on the turnover and the fumble recovery at the 12 yard line. Trevor Etienne is in the backfield with Richardson. Richardson sidearms it out, completes. It'll be a first down and then some. Xavier Henderson out to the 30. Let's take you back to the turnover and watch the left hook from Vontrell Miller here. Boom! Right on the button, huh? <laughs> great shot. It really is. And the recovery, Trevez Johnson. And on this one, it was a great shot by the quarterback, Richardson, running out. He was under duress, threw that one with a rusher right in his face and made the play. So first down at the 30. ETN only got about a yard. Get nonstop sports news, expert picks, and the biggest highlights on CBS Sports HQ, the free 24-7 sports news network. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. If you don't get totally sick of me in the next three and a half hours, you can watch me on HQ when the game is over. <laughs> Your turn. It's always fun <laughs> recapping the game. That guy's happy. Florida was on their heels on that drive. That Tennessee drive was very effective. You can see why Napier wanted to keep the ball away from these guys. Yep. Richardson has time. Deep out. What a catch by Ricky Pearsaw. Boy, that had to be right there. It would have it been did, intercepted. But what a route he did. Watch him sell it going inside on this one. Comes in, really runs it hard. Flashes in, and then the ball's laid up. There was a lot of people saying that Anthony needed to put more touch on the ball. He did on that one. And now it's Etienne who goes for nine more. And Florida, for the second time, rumbles their way into volunteer territory. Isn't it funny how everything works better when the quarterback is throwing the ball accurately? Yes. The whole offense looks smoother. Short yardage. Richardson keeps and slides and has a first down. Coming in to this game, when you looked at the numbers, you liked the 5.6 yards per rush, but you don't like the 5.5 yards per throw. And still looking for a touchdown pass. Well, I don't really blame Coach Napier for not running Richardson a lot. He was Nick, as Jenny told you, in the open, and the backup quarterback position is very inexperienced. Right. So he tried to get by Kentucky, South Florida. He didn't. Big mistakes cost him, but he's running them here. Richardson, a little bit of pressure, rolls away from it, throws on the run, and he had a man open, but it's incomplete. Whittemore was open in the corner of the end zone. I think he might have been over the line on that play. Ball was right on the 35-yard line. I think his foot might have been behind it. This will be reviewable whether his it's got to be your whole body and foot past the line of scrimmage. Illegal four pass offense number 15. Pulling the ball beyond the line of scrimmage. This is going to be pretty easy for the replay official. Balls on the 35 was his right foot behind the line of scrimmage. I think that's I think okay. That, I isn't think it? it's going to be okay. I really do. I think they're going to re reverse that. That is reviewable. Nicky Haddock is a replay official. One of the few penalties that can be reviewed and overturned. Obviously, when he lands, he's three yards past the line of scrimmage. But as Gary but, uh, said, I think his right toe is behind the line. There's where he plants his right foot. Gene Steratore is our replay. Expert, I mean our officiating expert. Gino, what do you think? <laughs> you know what? I think Gary did a very an expert job on the on, on on describing it. The right foot to me is behind the original line of scrimmage. I was watching the officials too that are positioned on the line of scrimmage to see kind of how they covered it in real time. And you can see the official right there who had gone down the field by about a yard or two, trying to work himself back so that he could get a proper line of demarcation there to see where it was. Gina uh, ruled it, illegal forward pass, but I think they'll overturn Gary. Gene, interesting. The official right there didn't call it. The one on the far side of the field, 50 yards away, is the guy who called it on that play. 
And you know, I, I will say this, Gary, mechanically, that's the proper procedure. Really, the official where the quarterback is rolling to, he should kind of retreat behind where that runner is coming, where the off official, who really doesn't have a lot of activity, uh, activity in front of him, he should then hold that line and be able to make that ruling as it relates to the quarterback in the line of scrimmage. Scott Walker is our on the field referee taking the headset off. We'll give us a call. It, it here is a close. I'll say that. After review, there is no foul for illegal forward pass. It is an incomplete pass. It will be second down and 10 at the 35 yard line. One more quick question to Gene. Gene, is that play called like a fumble because it can be reviewed anything close? Do they call it and let the replay official fix it? Yeah, I think it's wise to do it in that case, Gary. Um, as you said, if he, in fact, would have been beyond, and now that you, you do call that, it's difficult to pull that back up. But, uh, yeah, I think in those cases, you let that play go on, and, and in this day and age, you let replay fix that. And I think yep. it's a good job. And fix it they did. So it's just an incomplete pass. Second down and 10. Got to get it to third and short. Do they run the ball here? Etienne is behind Richardson. He gets the call. Got a couple. It was, but Beasley that time, the linebacker, just fit the play. Watch him read it, fill it and make the play inside. Another third down and long. Florida's had a few of them here in the first quarter that has five minutes remaining. The trick in spy, uh, spying on a running quarterback is you want to eat a blocker as you spy and then drop off and look. If you just stand there, you're wasting a player. Richardson looks left, comes back right. Overshot his intended receiver, Justin Shorter. Mal Hayden, number five, bump and run coverage, shorter, the tallest of the receivers for Florida. Big size, Penn State transfer, ball uncatchable. Good coverage that time. This is going to be right about on the edge of Adam Mahalik's range. He's hit from 50 this year. And this will be from 50. Mahalik, former walk-on, from 50 yards out, kick on the way, no good. A little bit short, a little bit left. A lot of action in this first quarter, considering we don't have any score. Tennessee takes over on offense when we come back. Welcome back to Neyland Stadium. We are scoreless. We'll back, get back to the game in just a second. Now, September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, so that gives us an opportunity to pay homage to Mike Sly. He was the commissioner of the SEC from 2002 all the way until 2015. Live passed away from complications of prostate cancer in 2018, but one of his lasting legacies was creating this foundation that bears his name. Since one in eight men will get prostate cancer, the goal of the Mike Sly Foundation is to eradicate this disease. And with early diagnosis, it's nearly 100% treatable. On Thursday evening, the Mike Sly Foundation held its annual Beyond Blue fundraising event, and basketball coaches Andy Kennedy, Bruce Pearl, John Calipari, and many more were there to support the foundation. And guys, you're seeing both head coaches wearing this pin today to honor Mike Slive, but really also to join in the battle against prostate cancer. Yeah. Mike Slive, great gentleman, and Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, September. If you haven't had your PSA checked, fellas, go do that. It's a good idea. Trust me. Here's a throw out in the flat. Complete, nice move. Jabari Small with a big gain out of the backfield. Yeah, but the blocking outside is what really did it. He may don't go out there and clean it. That was Hyatt at the slot. Jalen Hyatt, they cleaned it up. Hooker rips one to the outside to Hyatt. They'll get about seven more. Boy, this is a well-oiled passing machine, isn't it? It is. We saw it, as I said, the opening game, 
Hendon Hooker when he broke in as a starting quarterback against Florida. But right now, boy, he's a confident football player. Jabari Small's got the first down as he crosses the 40 to the 39. And remember when uh, that last drive against Florida, they had Florida's defense on their heels. It was a fumble, a punched out fumble that turned it around. Hooker going to get swallowed up this time. He finally got to him. He waited a little too long, and Shamar James flies in there to make the sack. Well, we talked about this Tennessee offense just picking apart Florida, but then this time, nothing there. Maybe to the bottom of the screen, but eyes were right that time for Hooker, and he did not see the open receiver to the left. Fourth sack of the year by the Florida defense is... Put the balls back to a second and 16 at the 45. Yeah, that time small goes in motion as a indicator, whether it's man or zone, and then the play is called afterwards. Hooker stands tall in the pocket. Complete out to Romel Keaton. So that's when we talked to Hendon on Friday. He said his goal, goal was to be quiet in the pocket. Coming off of a sack, he still maintained his composure and delivered a strike to the outside. And then Keaton, one busted tackle, first down. Says he likes to watch film of guys like Randall Cunningham, who used to be called in the pocket. And here he comes out, blasting out of the pocket. Just like Randall Cunningham. A little bit. So far in the game, the only player for Tennessee to have a rushing attempt has been their quarterback. Another first down inside the 20 of Florida at the 18. Now a little stutter step and driving forward. And about a five-yard pickup for Jabari Small. And my mistake, I remember just before that, we had one Small with a five-yard gain. There's another one for him. So they're spreading it around a little bit, yep. but the quarterback run has hurt Florida. Ooh. That one's going nowhere. Eaten up inside. Those linebackers filled it fast. Brenton Cox as well. Mari Bernie number two play about four of them inside that time Bernie the hero of the Utah game comes in and stuffs the play. So third down and six and a rarity Tennessee taking its time a little different look in the past you could almost expect or count on a blitz from Florida they play more bracket coverage now and blitz less. Third down at seven. Three wideouts to the bottom of your screen. Everybody has a look to the sideline. Here comes a blitz. Down the middle, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, incomplete. And it was Jacob Warren, the tight end, who got a hand on it but couldn't hold it. And it almost looked at like a conceded completion right here, didn't it? Put on right there, big bubble, a lot of space. You knew where the ball was going, but it was not accurately thrown, and that's why it was incomplete. Rashad Torrance really closed quickly on what it, Gary said looked like a wide open catch. It was, and if he put it right on his numbers, it would have been, but it allowed Torrance to make the play from behind. Chase McGrath will try to break our scoreless tie from 32 yards away, and he tucks it inside the left upright. Good. So it took almost 14 minutes for somebody to get on the scoreboard. Tennessee looked like for sure a couple of times they were going to score touchdowns. They have to settle for a 32 yard field goal. Three nothing Tennessee capping a 51 yard drive and 10 plays with the field goal. Yeah, you know, that's going into this game. Tennessee is one of the fastest paced teams in college football. Tennessee actually so far trailing the leading the score, but Florida more plays and that's what Billy Napier said. We got to find a way to keep the ball, but they also got to find a way to change that. Number. That's right. That's right. Jason Marshall, Trevor Etienne awaiting uh, the kick of Paxton Brooks. Two third down plays, a fumble and a poor pass, have been the stoppers on both of those drives. And a little indecision, but they'll take a knee and bring it out to the 35-yard line. Gives us a chance to remind you, tomorrow the NFL is on CBS. 
Featuring Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs going to Indy to take on the Colts. Plus a meeting of undefeateds in the AFC East between the Bills and the Dolphins or the Bengals battling the Jets. It all starts with JB and the guys at noon Eastern on the NFL today. Tomorrow, the NFL is on CBS. Does it not feel like Anthony Richardson is more comfortable here on the road than he was at home? Way more. You know, just feeling that Florida crowd, you know, and being a hometown guy, he just looks like he's playing today, playing ball. Sure what the holdup is. But the officials are going to eventually get out of the way and start things at the 25. They made an announcement, but I didn't hear it. Boy, we could hear it when we were here yesterday. Yes, we could. <laughs> okay. Gators, both tight ends left. And now they go with tight ends right. I think they had to put a second back on the clock. On the 25, Richardson pressured, throws late, throws incomplete. Intended for Keon Zipper. Decent protection. Time to throw the ball just at the end. He gets a little bit of push from Thomas. This Florida offensive line, they feel it's one of their best they've had. You look behind Aquan Wright and Anthony Richardson. The big fellas up front, second down at 10. 10. Henderson all the way in motion across to the bottom of the screen. Richardson going to run it here, get what he can, and out of bounds around the 30. Bring up third down at five. So not only did uh, Anthony Richardson come into the season, maybe with still mending that quad injury then he had that hard hit in that game right on that ankle in that Kentucky game and then with the weakness at backup quarterback Florida was hesitant to call runs right. and I think they need the design run game for this offense to work for Florida of course he had that hamstring injury last year too he's had some issues in the hamstring area here early in this season as well third down and six Throw complete. First down. Got it out to Xanders. Talked about this veteran offensive line for Florida. Watch them pick up the stunt right here coming around. Be patient on the offensive line. Inside, inside, inside. Yes, you got it, White. Nice job, Ethan White. Number 77. Don't chase. One guy leaves. Another one usually comes to replace him. Remember, they're being taught that there's a scrambling quarterback. Everybody's got to have a lane, so be patient. Somebody's coming in your lane. Naquan Wright. Back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. Dominique Bailey made the tackle. As our first quarter comes to a close. 52nd all-time meeting between the Vols and the Gators. And at the end of one, it's Tennessee by three. Our aerial coverage of today's game is brought to you by Goodyear. You get a great look at checkered Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee, as we start the second quarter with the Vols leading 3 0. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jenny Dell with you as the sun comes out over Neyland Stadium. Anthony Richardson on a quarterback run. Boy, puts his head down and plows Trayvon Flowers with him for a good gain out to the 44. Yeah, Trayvon Flowers is a, a safety, but he's not used to tackling a guy like that. 240 pounds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Makes third down a lot easier right now on Richardson's run, third and two. Empty backfield, so it'll be Richardson's call again unless somebody joins him. It will be Richardson. He's short by yard. Omar Thomas, number 21, 
Defensive tackle makes a pile inside. Right here, I think it is. Watch him make a pile. Then it's forced bounce outside and then cleaned up for the stop. Byron Young makes the tackle. He bounces off and brings Richardson down a yard shy. And if he does, this will go the third, fourth down attempt of the game. They got one of them. They failed on the other. Fourth and, they, and a long yard here. They look confused. Are they going to have to take a timeout because the receivers are not ready yet? Play clock winding down as well. They do get the snap off Richardson. Yeah, they took a timeout, didn't they? They had That's to. That's a smart one. The receivers were running over, I'm looking around. They had no four. idea what the play the was or, or even right where to line up on the play. So we'll take the timeout as well and see if Coach Napier decides to go on fourth and one again. Here's a look from our AT&T 5G pylon cam as we scan the field and head down to the Florida Gators coming back from that timeout. And Billy Napier has decided to go for it on fourth down. And it's about a yard and a half, to be it honest is. with you. Now, remember, also, he could try to draw him off sides. But I think he's convinced that he needs his offense to help his defense in this game. Richardson rolled us in some trouble, got away from it, throws and completes it for the first down. So he's, it's been always the quarterback. A sneak, a keep, and now a boot. <laughs> and I think he feels that for his defense to stay in the game, his offense has to hold up and make some plays. We showed the plays a little bit earlier, and Napier says, keep the ball, guys. Keep there we go. Ball. Got it to Xanders to the 45 yard line. Six passing first downs already. Far cry from a week ago against South Florida. Richardson got some heat again. Boy, he's in some traffic and he throws a rope down to the 20 yard line. Breaking the tackle is Zipperer and Zipperer is still going to the end zone. Touchdown, Florida. 44 yards on the Richardson to Zipperer touchdown. Well, it paid off. He went for it on fourth down. He gambled. It was a great play by the quarterback, staying alive and finding Zipperer. And then it was a better play by Zipperer <laughs> to make the catch and dodge a couple. Watch this inside the pocket. Move, move, and then find somebody. When you're in the middle of that mess, you find a receiver and... Boy, not only one, two, three times he gets away from ball tacklers. That was one heck of a run after catch by Zipperer. And the extra point is up and good. Now first, Anthony Richardson doing what he does well, move it around in the pocket. And then what he hadn't done well throughout the season, Find Zipperer for the first touchdown pass of the year. And it's a 7-3 Gator lead. Back in Knoxville, Florida has taken the lead. 7-3. Good news, you can now enjoy every episode of TV's new number one comedy, Ghosts. Catching up on demand or streaming on Paramount Plus. And new episodes return this Thursday at 8.30, 7.30 Central here on CBS. Good looking drive by Florida, 75 yards and eight plays. Anthony Richardson made some big plays and so did that guy, Keon Zipperer, junior out of Lakeland, Florida, on the receiving end of that touchdown pass of 44 yards. Mahalik on the kick and fair catch called for by Tennessee. They'll bring it out to the 25. Two big plays on that drive, Gary. Yeah, how about the confidence in a struggling quarterback? Okay, first the fourth down play, the third of the game. This time he says, you're going to have to make a play with your arms. He does it half arm, half legs. Now, usually when a quarterback is struggling, once you flush him, you really can't get him to throw. But look at this time. Instead of just looking right here, 
and here and here, he actually gets his eyes downfield. That's when you know you're doing it at a high level and you're playing free. He was playing tight before, just looking at it, but now he's stretching the field and making the plays. Let's see if Hendon Hooker has an answer. And he's going deep, and he's got a man wide open on the run. Brew McCoy with a stiff arm, and he's out inside the 10. Boy, just inexcusable for the Florida defense this time. Not much trickery. McC McCoy's in the slot, and he just goes long, and no one covers him. 70-yard pickup to the five. The Tennessee in one play threatening. And they pick up a couple there. I mean, what's the answer for this? I mean, just, just line up right here, and he just goes long. I mean, watch this. Just runs right by the Florida defense. What nobody, are they thinking? Nope, nobody home. They were home. They just didn't do their reads. Well, he did. Hendon Hooker, touchdown. That's how you answer a Gator march. You sure do. So really, it's been Tennessee who stopped Tennessee, okay? The great punch out on third down fumble, and then they get a bad pass on the other third down. But Hendon Hooker's been on. Florida works so hard to get a touchdown. Right. And then you hand them one. You just hand them one. That's what Billy Napier will tell his team. Guys, it's too hard to beat them the right way. We yeah. can't help them. The grab. Extra point is good. I tell you, you give it, give a crap to Hendon Hooker right now. The way he's playing quarterback, he's going to hurt you in the pass and the run. His third rushing touchdown of the year, and the Vols are back in front. Tonight on CBS Sports Network, catch a battle in the Mountain West as UNLV takes on Utah State. Chris Lewis and Robert Turbin bring you that one. That's followed by San Jose State hosting Western Michigan. Carter Blackburn and Dante Whitner will bring you that one. It's all on CBS Sports Network tonight. Brew McCoy, the transfer from USC, a 70-yard catch that got Tennessee down close, a career long for him. And Hendon Hooker did the rest from four yards out. 10-7, Tennessee. Ness, I got here. When we got here, I went right up to the booth, and Brew was more open than I was, and there was nothing here at the stadium at that time. When I walked over, more people around me than Brew McCoy that time. First touchdown pass of the season for Florida uh, two drives ago, and as I mentioned, the long ball. And Gary was the only guy more open than McCoy. <laughs> now let's see if Florida's got an answer again. I'll take a knee a yard deep. So a little short motion, which should not be too difficult. A wide stance, and the safety just stands there. You got bump and run to the outside. Safety lets him go right back, and Torrance, who's in the middle of the field, has to clean it up, but 70 yards later. And then, you know, inside the 20-yard line, Tennessee loves the option. Now Florida out at the 25, just under 12 minutes to go in the half. ETN behind Richardson and the pistol set from the 25. They fake it to him. This is the same kind of play that he got that big first down. This time throws late and into the dirt and complete as we check in with Jenny. Yeah, Coach Heupel said there's not a louder place in all of America than Neyland Stadium today. And there's definitely some communications down here on the Gator sideline, guys. Coaching, they're having to constantly repeat themselves. Players having to get up and move right next to their coaches to hear them. You can't even hear yourself think down here. I'm telling you, before the game, we had to go and we were doing our hit with Zook and the guys. We had our hand mics in hand and decided we couldn't hear them well enough so we better put our headsets on so I know exactly what you're going through. Richardson low throw but complete to uh, Whittemore. Yep and those are the ones he's been missing the easy ones. Hook pass 12 14 yards downfield 
You've been missing it. Haddon, that looks like, isn't it? Yep. Come on, Haddon is the guy that's down. Let's see if we can see anything as he turns back. I don't think he was in the picture there. That wasn't even on the play. Good job by Whittemore to get down low, get his hands under that pass. Be a first down. And we'll check on Kamal Haddon when we come back. Guys. All right, Zook, see you then. Kamal Haddon came out under his own power. Shorter was running around, just put the brakes on and hit him right in the bread basket there, and I think just knocked the wind out of him. At least we'll hope that's it. With I have to come out for a play no matter. Yep. Again, decent protection. The combination of Richardson breaking the pocket, feeling the pocket like the touchdown pass and moving around has given good protection to him. Just the one sack. Fakes it to ETN, loads it. And fires and got it again. Complete to Pearsall. And fires is the word. That's what he has. That ability. Top of the screen. Receiver. Going to be a bootleg action, but that's the matchup to the outside. And Pearsall gets by him. A double move to the outside. Out and up. And that ball wasn't more than 15, 20 feet in the air. It was a rocket. First down at the 20. No gain on that one. Billy Napier doing some coaching on Richardson over on the sideline during that last time out. And we saw many times, well, many, this year when he came back from interceptions, making key interception throws. Napier was right there, kind of building his confidence, coaching him. As he said, he's early in the system. It's a new system, and he hasn't had a lot of experience. Second down and 10. Oh, that, oh, that ain't working. Uh, motion everywhere. Yep. That looked like some kind of a trick play, and it tricked Florida. <laughs> Offense, number 18. It might be loud here, but Billy Napier was trying to communicate to his whole team that time, and he was not happy. Look at this. They, they look, the tight ends think there's going to be a shift, and that was not good. They called it on Xander's 18. They could have called it on about three different yeah, guys. There were four people moving right. on that play. Now you're behind the chains, first and 15. Second, second, and 15, second and 15, excuse me. Yeah, it's short running game at first. Now they do shift the two tight ends from one side to the other. And they go with a straight handoff. ETN got popped because he got about three yards before he's buried under a sea of orange. Again, the running backs have not been able to gash him. They've been effective all year. They don't throw to the running backs much, this Florida team. Only four completions all season, and none so far today. That used to be a staple for totally. Florida. Yes. Third and long. They need to get to the 10 yard line. Florida has been facing a lot of zone in this situation. Again. Richardson, plenty of time. Across the middle and a first down inside the 10 to Trent Whittemore again. When you have a quarterback that can run the ball, you want a lot of guys to have their eyes on the quarterback, and that's why they play zone. But when you do that and you're not a good zone team, it opens it up. Florida giving Tennessee a taste of their own medicine a little bit with some tempo. They go quickly, and they pick up two yards with ETN. Trevor ETN is the younger brother of Travis of the Jacksonville Jaguars, former Clemson star. Have you messed that up yet today so far? I just had to get that out, so I thought I'd... <laughs> You, you know, got it. You get were... rid of my own jinx right there. <laughs> Florida substitutes, so Tennessee is allowed to have a late substitution. Second down a goal. Ball just inside the volunteer seven yard line. Florida trying to answer Tennessee's touchdown with one of their own. Richardson to run all the way, try to get to the edge, and does. Walk in Anthony Richardson touchdown. Boy, you talk about getting the edge and getting it fast. 
a late shift to the outside, and they just get around the corner. Good job by Barber. Gets out there, got a blocker in front of him, ETN, and he just walks in. He walks right over our AT&T 5G pylon cam, in fact, on his way to the end zone on a seven-yard touchdown run. Yeah, and, a, and another one of those drives. You know, Florida in this game's had four drives. They're averaging almost nine plays a drive. Got to be. Now, they didn't want to give up a cheap touchdown like they did, but they're controlling the ball. Number 15 playing like the guy that all the Florida fans is, were hoping that he'd become so far in this first half. Yeah, Utah fans are going, yeah, that's the guy we played. Yeah, that's the guy we played the first week. Extra point is good. 8.28 remaining first half. A 75-yard drive and eight plays through the arms and the legs, in this case, of Anthony Richardson. Touchdown, Florida. Coming up, Adam Rook and BJ will have first half analysis and all the best highlights from around the country on the Geico Halftime Report. Here we've seesawed back and forth between the Gators and the Vols. Florida in front now, 14 to 10, to that last touchdown run by number 15. And Hendon Hooker waiting his chance. Mahalik with a kick and a fair catch taken at the seven yard line. Now it's time to do Project Smarter presented by the Home Depot. When you're building a program, you need a support staff usually. Yeah, oh. they, and Florida's got themselves a support staff, don't they? Yeah. This is modern football, <laughs> and they've got a hundred supporters. The football players are in the front. And now, how about your day? My day. We, we had four of them. <laughs> <laughs> and we had three first round draft picks and they never talked to me one time. Uh, four, four guys. Is, four guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's some of the support staff <laughs> of Tennessee on their sideline. Uh, Florida's got a bunch of them. Hendon Hooker on the run. Got seven. Brought down by number seven. Well, this high tempo Tennessee offense has not been able one of the reasons is they had a short drive and a turnover they had a 70 yard play but the Florida defense has only faced 20 plays in this game so far. And this is going to be another good play by Chris McClellan number seven made the last tackle and this one's a tackle for loss. Yeah you got to make a pile in the middle of it. Can you make a pile inside? They do, and then you chase it down from the backside. Freshman from Tulsa, 300-pounder. Two big plays by him is forced to third down and five here for the Volunteers. Yep, that's a number seven at defensive tackle. That's the way they do it now, right? That's right. Makes him look slim. Yes, it does. At 300 pounds, you need to look slim. <laughs> that's all right. They got one guy that weighs over 400. That's right. Jalen Wright with Hendon Hooker in the backfield, but it's a Hooker pass upcoming down the middle and on strike. And it's Jalen Hyatt again. So you got to have the running back help you in those situations. Florida Bing brings a linebacker, and Wright, Jalen Wright takes it on and allows the pass before Bernie can get to the quarterback, Hendon Hooker. 19 yard pickup. Hooker looking for more. Completes it again. This is going to be a first down to Brew McCoy as you hear the chance of Brew. Had that big 70 yarder earlier. And the transfer from USC, another first down. Yeah, that, that's the real challenge. Can you know we talk about the guys all the time with the ball, but if Florida's guys without the ball, that defensive line don't get the quarterback, they're in trouble. This is a tough four yards for Jalen Wright. One of the top 10 in the nation in plays per game and circumstances in this game a turnover and Florida holding the ball very effectively. Josh Heupel said to us yesterday we never concern ourselves with number of plays if our offense is rolling the plays are going to pile up but we don't have a but that isn't what Billy Napier said to us. No it is. He said we need to hold down the plays right for our defense. We are we are not as deep as I'd like us to be and our offense has to help us so far so good.
Try to follow the blocking and it's not going to go anywhere. Nice job to stretch it out. The Florida defense just kept heading toward that sideline. You know, as a guy matures and Brenton Cox, watch him. And in, in his day, people thought that maybe he just wanted to rush the passer. But watch this time. Watch his effort. He plays the whole play, chases it down and goes the whole. That's what the scouts look for. They know he can rush the passer. Will he play every play? Third down and eight. Got that bear look. Three defensive linemen inside with the two edge rushers, a five man front. Up front with the linebacker sneaking up to make it six. Hooker. He'll run and throw late. Incomplete. He had his man wide open. He the did. Tight end. Jacob Warren. So Hendon Hooker's a basketball player, and that's just like playing point guard right there. He's dribbling down the court. Watch, he dribbles to his right. He draws the defense, keeps his eyes downfield, and should have used the bounce pass. That, <laughs> almost was a bounce pass. That's the only part he didn't do right. Yep. To get it to number 87. Be a 50-yard field goal from here. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth down and eight. Got to get all the way to the 25. And now maybe they're going to think about it, or is Florida going to take a timeout? Florida takes the timeout. That's their second of the half. With 5.21 remaining, we'll take a quick break with them and be right back. Fourteen to ten Florida with 521 remaining in the first half as you look in at the Tennessee River and Neyland Stadium. And then Hooker might have been holding his shoulder a little bit yeah, when he, he came off. He's run a few plays at the, the running attack hasn't he full out blitz. Fourth and eight. Look out from behind down he goes the ball is out going to be Florida football either way. You got it. That time you wondered what Florida drop back and play coverage or would they come after him they went after him. it's been the word for Florida all day has been be aggressive right and they were aggressive on that fourth down call watch us four man front they bring five drop the defensive end but they bring the two inside linebackers and then hooker didn't have anybody but from the backside it's Bernie again and it's Ventrell Miller on the fumble recovery after forcing one earlier Ventrell not having a big day as well and they're going to take over at the 38 yard line. Well, one guy that would like to learn how to get out of halves is Anthony Richardson, right? I yeah. mean, he, they, that's when he's at his trouble is making mistakes at the end of half. Can he get out of half a nice four minute drive? Here's exactly what the doctor ordered for Florida. They blitz Richardson throws wide incomplete. Intended for Henderson. So remember, he ran the ball right up the middle on one of those plays, took it out, and kind of seemed a little uncomfortable before that fourth down play pass. And this time he heads right to the tent. Favoring his right shoulder, or maybe just to stir him. I don't know exactly. He was knocked out of last year's game. That's right. We mentioned that earlier. Doesn't want to get knocked out of this one. Gators second down at 10. Well, the running game has been nothing. Nope. That was really circled by this defense coordinator Tim Banks said we got to stop those running backs. If they're going to run it, we want number 15 to run it. He has. Right. And it's been successful. But if you give him a two-fisted running game, that defense will crack. Latrell Bumpus comes off after making that big stop. And now it's going to get loud again. Third down and 10. Let's see if the Tennessee pass rush can clean up the quarterback who's been so good at feeling that pass rush, both scrambling and finding the receiver after he moved up. They're coming after him. A stunt up front. Richardson throws complete. First down to midfield. Stepping out at midfield, I thought was Justin Shorter, but he did get the first down. So how about this Florida offensive line? It's a veteran offensive line. They sift to the right side, pick it all up. Number 15 feels the pressure from his right, just like, slides, slides over. I was just going to say. Slide, slide, <laughs> and throw. He did it perfectly. 
working together with his line. He knew where the pressure was coming, and he bought him some time. First down back in Tennessee territory for Florida at the 49. Tough for that uh, Tennessee defense. Last drive to the touchdown, they converted third and 12. That one was third and 10. Richardson again steps up in the pocket a little bit too far in front of Pearsoff. Yeah, that was a nice job. Again, moving up in the pocket just a bit high. I would not call that inaccurate, though. No. Could have been perfect, but uh, you know what he wants. This might be the play we're hearing that he might have got hurt again. He's running the ball aggressively and gets driven into the ground on his right shoulder. That was that first big play that McClellan made. Yeah, that's totally the play, no doubt about it. That 305 pounds that we talked about right on the shoulder of Hendon Hooker as they landed. Meanwhile, Florida trying to get more points before halftime. Second down. And again, the ground game goes nowhere. A loss of a yard. Yeah, that time it was Elijah Simmons, number 51, getting that penetration into the backfield that blew that play up. Well, here's another third down and long. Florida, all their drives have ended on Tennessee's end of the field. They do have two touchdowns off a couple of them. Still have plenty of time here not to give the ball back. They just relax and snap it. Gimmick Richardson. play. Yep, gimmick play did not work. And smartly gets rid of it and throws it over the bench. The offensive line never moved on the play. Trick play all the way. And now they're going to give the ball back with three minutes to go. Watch the offensive line of snap. They never move. Yeah. Third and long. That's uh, a bit too gimmicky for me. And Richardson took a pretty big hit, too. His hits, head and helmet bounced off the turf back there. This is a first punt of the day. I think Anthony Richardson and the Gator bench wanted roughing the passer. I didn't catch it. I had my eyes downfield, but uh, reading the body language after, I think they were really arguing for a roughing the passer on that throwaway. Jeremy Crowshaw, you look behind him, set for the punt. And it's going to let this one go, and it's going to be down around the one yard line. That's how you do it. Anytime you punt to around the one yard line, that's pretty good. <laughs> He's shorter, the wide receiver down there on the special teams, just waiting on that kick to roll down to the one. Well, let's check in with Jenny. Yeah, I was told for Hendon Hooker that it's an upper body injury, but he is going to be good to go to finish out this first half. The guy's on the sideline. He was definitely wincing in pain, so I know he's not feeling great out there. Well, he's going to come back out like that's why and it's not the same. This was a running quarterback, but that's why the NFL is really called a penalty when you drive the quarterback into the ground. That's when you really those big bodies driving you into the ground. That's when you get hurt. There's the numbers on Hendon today. The touchdown was on the ground from four yards out. Now he's in his own checkerboard end zone. And a short game, not much there. Jabari Small. Gators take him all the way back out into the back of the end zone. And oops, we got a little shoving going on, a little bit of punching. They do. On. No flags yet. Officials not overreacting. I'm warning them all this time. I bet they're saying no more of that, though. No more of that, or we're going to start calling from behind. They didn't like the way. They just kept moving the running back back and back and back and back and boys will be boys at the end. Huh? Brent Cox was trying to break it up and he took a little slap to the face mask and now Tennessee drives. There's where you put your aggression in right there. Absolutely. See absolutely. <laughs> Javari small picks up a first down talked about Florida had a roughing the passer. This is the end of that play. Jeremy Banks drives him. They look around. I don't know. He was running to the outside. I, I would not have called that either. Hooker, whatever the upper extremity problem is, he just had to throw that one away, and it barely made it to the line of scrimmage. So second down and ten. Even though he was outside the tackle box, you've got to get it past the line of scrimmage. I think it bounced right about where the line of scrimmage was. 
Tennessee's got all the timeouts remaining. It's still a minute 42. Look how wide this split is. That's a staple of this offense for Josh Harper. Using all the width of the field. Oh. Wow, what a hit that was. <laughs> I guess who? Metro Miller. Florida happy to have him back because this is what he can do. Cox turned it in. Miller cleaned it up. Timeout. Minute 33 remaining. Florida wanting to force Tennessee to punt has used its final timeout. CBS Sports probably celebrates Hispanic Heritage Month. And Knoxville, Tennessee, a minute 33 remaining in the half. Keeping with the theme of Billy Napier coming in aggressive, taking a timeout with third down to go here. Another aggressive call. Challenging his defense. And hoping they can stop this third and ten and Cause, force cause Tennessee, Tennessee to kick. Yeah, Tennessee has all three if they pick this up. Need to get out to the 22-yard line. Florida thinking about bringing some pressure, and they do straight up the middle. Hooker completes it to Odo first down. Princeton Fant, the tight end. Well, that time they had Brenton Cox in the middle at the linebacker position, not his normal defensive end position. Pressure's there. Ball completed just over the line. Tough throw going left. Yes, it was. Going back to the right. Especially when you got a bad shoulder. Yeah. Now he's going to go deep. Got a man out there. Oh, what a catch. Diving catch by Keaton. That's the backup wide receiver in the game for Cedric Tillman. You talk about pretty on a layout. And a 43-yard gain. Small. Maybe got three. We're under a minute. Tennessee, all its timeouts remain. Control Miller made the tackle. You cannot lay out any more than this. And because of the hurry up and no timeouts by Florida, they couldn't challenge. I think that's a clean catch. I do too. Back in 30 seconds with 44 seconds to play in the half. Fourteen ten, Florida in front, but Smokey and the Volunteer fans are thinking there's going to be more points for Tennessee before halftime because Hendon Hooker, whether it's a bad shoulder or whatever, he rips this one, and Romel Keaton lays out at the 35, that a 43-yard game. That is beautiful, isn't it? It sure was. Second and seven now at the 32. Hooker completes it again, same guy. To the 23. There's a first down. Clock's going to stop quickly, get it set, and then they'll wind it. First down at the 23. The Gators. Hendon Hooker looking for more. Completes it again. This one's to the tight end. Princeton fan. Yeah, and that'll force a timeout by Tennessee. The tackle to keep him in bounds was a big play by Florida right there. Tennessee's down to one timeout remaining. Well, we said Napier Campbell, right? I mean, on third down, right. he said, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to challenge you to make the first down. They did, but this time they've got the drive. They own it. Remember also, Tennessee gets the ball to start the second right. half. A nice thing one. of beauty. Nice when your backup receiver can do something <laughs> like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Cedric Tillman out due to injury makes this guy more valuable. And he and Jalen Hyatt have been big time today on the receiving end of Hendon Hooker passes. Last time the running back was open in the middle went out and angled in. Will they go back to him? That would be Jamari Small. Look at all that space in the middle of the field because of the wide splits. And Small going to flare out of the backfield. Hooker's going to take off. He sees open space. He takes it and he goes down inside the five. And now we got a little skirmish between the quarterback and the man that made the tackle. 
The clock will stop for the first down, and then they will start it. Remember, you could ground the ball, but there's plenty of time here left. You've got a timeout. First and goal. Small. Only a yard, maybe not even that much. Now they'll take a timeout. Now they'll take the timeout. There's plenty of space. Playing combo defense, and you've got room to run if you're the quarterback. And Hooker throws a little bit of an elbow on the bottom of that pile right there, like, get off me. And that started the skirmish at the end of that play. He and Trey Dean face mask to face. Yeah, mask. And that's usually the process there. When one team is trying to slow down the clock and make the tackle, they hold on, and the running back or quarterback's pushing to get up. Uh, that's normal competitive football, if you ask me. 17 seconds now and no timeouts. Do they have to throw here? Uh, I would. I, I, I would in this situation. I think you've got to at least roll your quarterback out so he has the option to get rid of it. And if he does feel he can get it in the end zone, he runs it in. Today, the Volunteers one for three. In the red zone for touchdowns. They're looking for one right here. Wouldn't would not be a afraid to go with the fade pass out here. The way Keaton went up and caught that ball, it would not he look at nice split. Plenty of room to the outside to throw the ball to. Jason Marshall is out there guarding him, and now Keaton's gonna come in tight. Everybody in close from the three-yard line. The throw over the top has hit this upright. They're going to call holding that time inside. They were trying to do the pop pass to Fant, number 88, and Florida held him. Get a condensed, watch it. They grab him right there. Good call. Pop pass, not there. Holding. Defense, number two. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first time. So it's about the one and a half. With 12 seconds left. Still dangerous to run the ball here to get off two plays. You still got to think to me roll out and where it's run pass for your quarterback. If you run it inside you could get burned. Empty backfield now they switch and get the tight ends on each side. 12th play of the drive. Hooker here's the rollout. There's the throw. There's the touchdown Tennessee. Brew McCoy on the receiving end of that one. Yeah, that's uh, sometimes the aggressiveness has worked with the fourth down calls. That time he saved just enough time to get a long drive by Tennessee and Hayden Hooker, Hayden Hooker, excuse me, made him pay. You talk about a drive before halftime. Try 99 yards in 12 plays to regain the lead. Hendon Hooker's in the tent. He's got a bad shoulder. <laughs> he gets there on the one yard line and takes him right down the field. Chase McGrath to try to give the balls a three point advantage with the extra point is up and good. Hendon Hooker doing his thing. Throws a strike to McCoy. And the chance of brew go around Neyland Stadium. Fouls back in front. Brew McCoy, the transfer from USC with his second touchdown catch of the year with seven seconds remaining in the second quarter. Can't do it much better than no, that. How about, it's a pretty good game here. Both quarterbacks have thrown for over 200 yards in the first half. We opened the game about this being a quarterback day. It, it is, right? Yep. Now Florida looking for a miracle return. And nice tackle on the special teams to end the half. As Gary said, good football game on both sides. 52nd meeting all time between Tennessee and Florida. Tennessee trying to snap a five-game losing skid against the Gators. Right now, they've got the lead at the break. I didn't buy Napier being aggressive there. He's been at the whole day. It's 17 14. Message to his team We're playing all out. Tennessee took advantage. 
Down to Jenny Dell with the leading coach. All right, coach. So Hooker looks to be hurt on the sideline. He's in the injury tent. We're told shoulder, upper body, and then he goes out. How does he go and lead that drive? He's fine, yeah. He's a great competitor, but he's ready to roll. So obviously you can see it on that drive. Yeah, when you're looking at this team now in the second half, they're getting a little chippy to end the first there. How do you maintain that competitive composure? Uh, competitive composure, All right? Reset, go play the next play. Uh, play snap to whistle and, and reset it. Uh, got some things we got to clean up both sides of the ball, but uh, let's go play ball in the second half. Thank you very much, Coach. All right, so Josh Heupel in his second year, leading Billy Napier in his first year as the Florida coach. End of the half, 17-14, as we send you to Adam Zucker in our New York studio for the Geico Halftime Report. Zook? Yeah, apparently we have a lot of alliteration ahead of us. Back in Knoxville, Neyland Stadium packed to the rafters and checkered today, and Tennessee trying to snap a losing skid against Florida that stretched five games. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nussler with Gary Danielson. A little over two hours ago, we opened up the show with all the great matchups over the years between quarterbacks in this series. We got two pretty good ones planned today, too. Yeah, both through for over 200 yards. I always judge a game like if I was home, when I stick, yeah, I'd be like, I'm going to watch the rest of this one. Well, I, am, I am, too. We're going to do it together. How's that? <laughs> yeah, I think both teams competed hard. They made some big plays, a few mistakes, but that's the way I like to watch it. I'll yep. tell you that. Three-point game here at the break, and Tennessee will get the football first to start the third quarter. Both teams needed their quarterback to run the ball. Neither one of them could really run the ball with their running backs. They needed help with the QBs. And they're going to return this one from a yard deep out to the 27. And let's check in with Jenny Dell. Yeah, I spoke with Coach Napier. He said the goal was actually to be in the fight during halftime. He said, hey, we're in the fight, so that's a win so far. But he said offensively they want to take advantage of opportunities, especially in the short game and defensively. He wants to, he wants to limit those explosive plays. He said no more mental errors in the second half, guys. Yeah, they can't afford any more 70-yarders if yeah. they're going to beat these guys. They had a big mental mistake for a 70-yard pass and right. a beautiful play on a 70-yard pass that would be tough to stop, but two huge plays. So the Volunteers will snap it from the 27 to open up the third quarter. Hooker on the RPO, quick slant, complete, and it's Brew McCoy again. And McCoy is closing in on 100 yards receiving. 248 in the half for Hendon Hooker. Anthony Richardson, a ground touchdown and one through the air finally. And here's a big opening. This is the first time on a run. Jabari Small, and he's on the run. Small, all the way down to the 28-yard line. Bernie saved a touchdown. Now a great block right here to the right side of the line. Just turns him out. Darnell Wright opens it up, and uh, that's the first breakout for a running back on a really clean block play. A quick snap. Hooker going back to the air. Got it out to Small. This time as a receiver, but no gain. Stopped by Trevez Johnson over there on the near sideline. Tell you what, when against space teams like Tennessee does, and they're as good at it as anybody in the country, you must tackle in space, and so far Florida has. Small got a couple. It's going to be third down and about seven. Josh Heupel's volunteers keeping their foot on the gas here. And snap goes over Hooker's head. There's a flag down as well. I think yeah, on Florida the, was offside, yeah. maybe. You get a play that it's going to be a snap out of field goal range, but Florida's going to get called for offsides on the play. Offside, defense, number 33, and then this is on the snap. Another big play. A motion man goes in front of him. And all of a sudden, an easy five yards. Ramon Miguelin is the guy that jumped. Right side, there he is. Yeah, just a little bit of motion was the difference that time. And look what happened. Out of field goal range. Instead, third down and short. Shorter. Third down and two coming up. Here goes these condensed formations that they've been using more than ever this year than compared to a first year hypo. And I don't know if they're going to get it or not. The guy that had the penalty made the tackle on Jalen Wright. Jalen Wright says he's got it and uh, he might be right. 
Get him in there tight, root him out. Cade Mays, number 63, the center, ran right behind him. And yeah, they do move the sticks. Excuse me, it's Cooper Mays. That was his brother, Cade. That's right. And his daddy was a captain back in the early 90s here. So it's a volunteer family. Yeah, they're going to bring the chains out. I spoke too soon on whether they were moving them. They're moving them to the field to take a look at this. And he got it by the nose. So this opening drive of the third quarter for the Volunteers has him back in the Florida 18 yard line. Last year in the second half, Florida outscored Tennessee 21 zip. But a big fourth down drop. Tennessee was still in that first that game. And then after that one, then the injury, they got kind of lost it. Right now, big drive. Hooker pulls it out, throws it out, complete, spinning near first down is Brew McCoy, and that's putting him over 100 yards receiving today. He says he likes to be quiet in the pocket, and he is. Short yardage run by Wright. He's got the first down. Anytime these tempo teams gain six, seven, eight yards on first down, they're coming right at you with the second play. They're already lined up there. First and goal. Just inside the seven. Hooker lobs one. He had him. Yep. Incomplete. That was one he should not have lobbed. They should have put a little mustard on that one yeah, to McCoy. He had, he had Brew wide open, coming on the corner route right inside. Boom, breaks Brew. out. He's got it. Just too high on that one, right? Just He line drives that one. He's got him in the corner of the end zone. When he gets down inside the 10-yard line, last time he hit the upright with an overthrow. <laughs> that was a penalty, though. And that one was too high as well. Tennessee does a good job of starting their wideouts real wide and then coming in. And then running the route from an in more space. Got two to each side here. Combo look three on two both ways for Florida. Hooker looks run. right now. He's yeah. going to run with it. He's going to coast in. Touchdown, Hendon Hooker. Got a flag down, however. Let's see what the flag's about. Carol Mincy, number 54, turned around and looked like. Wait, I hope you didn't see me do something because he right away turned around oh, to the official. Offense, number 54. It was 54. You can always tell the guy that has his hand in the cookie jar, can't you? Yeah, you sure can. So they're going to have to regroup, take Mincy six right off the board. Here, easy touchdown. Really didn't need to hold it all. It was a touchdown all the way, but just enough of a grab. Maybe a chance for a play. I doubt it with the speed of her. Uh, earned it on the play, but he turned around and looked and he was caught. Good call. So that negates a seven yard touchdown run by Hooker and backs it up to second and goal at the 17. Hooker throws in the flat. It'll be a touchdown this time. Jabari Small. Well, everyone's playing man to man, except for the guy running the back. Watch, he's got the back right here. Man, man, the linebacker doesn't follow his guy. He thinks it's zone, and it busts the defense. Hooker out to Jabari Small. He does the rest after the catch. That's two gift big plays yep. that Florida has just given him. You're playing man down there. You just cannot release the running back. McGrath in for the point after. Up and good. What a way to open the third quarter for the Volunteers. 73 yards in 10 plays. This is the capper. They backed up the one from the first half and started the one in the second half. Our aerial coverage of today's game brought to you by Goodyear. To look in at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville as it erupted a moment ago after Tennessee opened the third quarter with another touchdown drive. 
Now lead by 10. In the last five minutes and 35 seconds right. there of playing time, 14 points for Tennessee. That's exactly why teams defer when they win the toss. They love that opportunity to go back to back. You score and you get the ball back again to start. You end it and you start it. It's funny, Josh Heupel talked with us about that very thing yesterday in our meeting. Yep. Those final minutes of the first half and the opening minutes of the second half so important and they, boy they has just, that been the case today and and they executed it I don't like I said I don't mind Napier being aggressive right there with that call Tennessee just executed right. and they'll bring it out to the 25 yard line for Florida and now it's time for our hometown connection presented by T-Mobile here's Jenny Coach Napier was actually born in Tennessee, about 90 miles from here. His mom and dad went to Tennessee Tech. He moved to Georgia when he was two, but he has family members who are die-hard Tennessee fans. I asked if they're here, who they're rooting for, and Coach said, trust me, if they're here, they're rooting for us. If, if they're not rooting for us, they're not at this game. I promise you that. So he got 13 tickets for his family. They're all wearing the right colors today, guys. His brother in the middle looks like him. Yeah, I think that's him, right? I that, think so. That'd be my guess. Yeah. They go to the same barber, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Billy born in Cookville, Tennessee, before moving to Georgia when he's a couple years old. Anthony Richardson, pressure from behind, and he's going down. Flags down as well. We might have holding on top of a sack. Well, Brian Young, their best pass rusher, finally makes the play. Coming around the outside right there. Personal foul, Fixed. offense number 76. Number six gets him, both sides collapsed and turns around and says, that was holding on me, I'm telling you that right now. Garage is the guy that's the guilty party. And we're going to take a leather look at that play to see where the penalty Kinda is. Kind of pinned him, did they get him with the face? Oh. Yeah, he actually grabbed his Offensive face mask. Face mask. Yes. As he came around, they called it a personal foul a because it's that's an a offensive face mask. That's a true holding right there. Yeah, it really was holding his face. Backed up to the 13 yard line now, first uh, and 22. Double fake, and then the throw is on target out to the 28 yard line to Pearsaw, and that'll quiet the crowd. Pearsaw is the transfer from Arizona State. Anthony Richard gets in the pocket, trusts that offensive line. They just gave up a sack, but he's got a beautiful pocket. He delivers it where he had to, right off the outstretched arm of Trayvon Flowers that time. So they got a chunk of the penalty back, but it's still second down and six. Crowd noise is a factor. The running back has to come up and help on the play. He'll get the carry and the first down that time. Aquan Wright. So nice job by Wright. He comes up, he hears the audible, and then he helps the offensive line with the call, takes the handoff, finds the space for the first down. How about that back-to-back -back plays? Second down, third down for the first down. Now they got the first down and the end around. And a nice stutter step. And making something out of nothing was Xavier Henderson. I thought he was going to be stretched out of bounds, but a good gain on that one. Well, we saw Garage on the holding penalty. We'll watch him come back and do a good job to the outside this time. You're going to run the ball to the outside, and big number 76 gets to the outside, turns his man in for the very, very effective run play. At midfield, another Gator first down, trying to answer the scoring drive of Tennessee. Couple yards on that one for Naquan Wright. Juan Mitchell made the stop. And these two guys have both played very, very well today. The score's not tied, but those two guys are about tied, yep. right? The tough part, the, the, the noise here, the communication for the offensive line, getting off on the snap. This is probably the easiest spot to be in around midfield. You get down from one end to the other, it really gets tough on you. Richardson scrambling around, throws on the run, throws a dart complete. 
And got another, another flag. Only one, a three-man rush that time. Tennessee does, and are they going to get a hold out of it? Don't know if it was, you know, hand to the face mask or a hold. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense on the six. Yes, it was the other way that time. Austin Barber, number 58, is the guy who got to the hand of the face. Right over here to this side is going to be the action. Yep, right up there. Ryan Young, number six, early in the pass rush. There's the shove to the face. Yep. So we had one go each way so far this quarter. Let's move the ball down to the Tennessee 21 yard line. And I'd be thinking almost you got to be thinking four down territory right here. Trailing by 10. We're down calls. The fake to Naquan Wright. Richardson rolls and now throws to the end zone. Overshot. Xavier Henderson. Well, I'll tell you. The press box will see that on this play, when you fake the ball to the running back, nobody carries the running back. He was wide open on the play. Good coverage to the outside this time. Charles takes him, but watch the running back get the fake, and no one covers him here to the top of the screen. Little wheel route out there. Yeah. Yep, that'll be noticed. Empty backfield. And the shift. Continues with three receivers in tight on the left side. That's a run all the way for Richardson in that direction. That was the same play to the left that he scored the touchdown to the right earlier in the game. Same formation, just flipped the other way. There's the convoy in front. Good blocking, picked up five yards. Still needs four more for a first down. How close do you have to be? Because remember, field goal makes it a seven point game to go for it on fourth down. Third and five. Need to get to the 11 yard line. It's a run by Montrell Johnson out of the Wildcat, and he's short. And it's fourth down. Tough decision. I how close are they? He's aggressive all day has been the word from the very first drive on. Well, he's going to go again. Ooh, this is a long two, is it not? It's more like three. Again, field goal makes it a seven point game. I would kick the field goal, but he's got a lot of confidence. Maybe he's dialing up the way the offense for Tennessee is going, thinking I got to have seven. They shift the tight ends. From left to right. Play clock down to three. Richardson on fourth down, throws, and it's caught. Complete down to the six yard line to Zipperer. Boy, how about all the decisions you have to make as a head coach, wow. right? Everyone has such a big outcome on the game, and then you got to trust your guys being wide open on the play. No one even near them. So first and goal down to the two is Richardson. Crowd was rocking. Tennessee had gone back to back touchdowns. Now what do you do? Just keep playing football. That's what Florida has done. Second and goal at the two. Driving in near the goal line. Montrell Johnson, but he's not in. Montrell Johnson, the transfer, Sunbelt freshman of the year, getting backup carries. You know, Naquan Wright of the two, one, two guy. Quarterback keep. Richardson's in. Well, they haven't signaled that. I thought he was in. Apparently, they do not agree. Oh, well, they don't. They're still talking. Hold on. They're still talking. From up above, it certainly looks like he's across the goal line. They called him short. Now the replay official is going to have a clean look. Well, I mean, how much farther and, and, do you have well, to get in? This is where you're really happy to have replay on a play like this. 
He loses the momentum, but I think I, I agree with you. I think he's over the line. I think they're going to reverse it and call in a touchdown. His knee was never down on the ground because no. he was on the back of all of his players. Right. Again, they have him collared, and I mean, he's he's in by a yard, if you ask me. <laughs> but nobody's asking me. You're telling them, even if they aren't asking. <laughs> So it's in the hands of uh, Mickey Haddock right now, the replay official. Gene Steratore is watching in New York. What do you think, Gene? I'm with you guys. I, I, he's definitely in by a yard. And, you know, I empathize because you try to get back on the field as an official and try to think what are the guys that are ruling and girls that are ruling on whether it's a touchdown or not. There's so many bodies there when you're on the line and the goal line running in, hoping you can see the ball. There were times when I wish they would have tied me to a wire and hovered me <laughs> over the goal line. Two phones. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. The ball carries close to goal line. Oh, Anthony Richardson, a one-yard touchdown. How about that 11-play drive to answer? In the last four meetings, Florida has scored at least 31 points in this game. Right. So both sides realize we got to score to win this game. And a lot. They got to get in the 30s, it looks like, for sure, to win the game. Extra point coming up. Mahalik. To try to make it 24-21. Does. At the 5.55 mark, remaining third quarter. A 75-yard drive in 12 plays. Some big fourth down conversions in there as well. Including that one to Zipper. That got him close. Anthony Richardson got him in. His fourth rushing touchdown of the year. 24-21. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Allstate. Sonic. Coors Light. And by Degree. Beautiful day to be out rowing on the Tennessee River. If you're not inside Neyland Stadium where there's 102,000. Quite a sight, isn't it? Sure is. And Vesco. Brings you today scholar athletes. Trent Whittemore has got some catches today for Florida. Paxton Brooks for Tennessee. Invesco proud to support student athletes on and off the field with a donation of $1,000 to both Florida and Tennessee's general scholarship fund. Well, that drive for Florida at one point, they had a first down and 22 at their own 13 yard line. They cap off that 12 yard march with a touchdown from Anthony Richardson. And we got a ball game. 24-21. Florida's three for four on fourth down. Two of them have been pass plays. Gutsy all day long. They're playing wide open because this high-powered group of volunteers, they know they got to put points on the board. Tennessee, good run back by Jimmy Holiday, who's in this half after being kept out of the first half for disciplinary reasons. He got in a skirmish last week, threw a couple of punches. And now Josh Heupel. And Alex Golish, his offensive coordinator, back to work on the headsets. There's Coach Golish on the left. And he and Josh Heupel have been together for seven years. They instinctively understand the adjustments they need to make. They've seeded about all, running the same offense together for seven years. They know how to yin and yang against the best of whatever they see. Two receivers in the backfield with Hendon Hooker, and now Hyatt goes out to the top of your screen. Hooker's looking that way and is not going to get a throw away, but he's got it on the run, and he's got a first down and a bunch more. Hendon Hooker down the sideline. Big play all the way to the 18 yard line. It looked for sure that it was going to be a sack in the backfield, but gets pushed right by and then. Hooker just sees what he's got in front of him. Just enough blocking. The wide receivers stay active. This guy's some athlete, some quarterback, isn't wow. he? 44 yards later, Tennessee's back in the red zone. Ventro Miller is the guy that made the touchdown saving tackle, and he's still down.
There's Ventrell coming flying in pushes hooker out. And I wonder if he got cramps on, on, on that play because he laid everything he had just to get there to push him out. He did look like he's trying to stretch it out on his own we'll check on him. Ventrell Miller chugging Gatorade over there on the sideline coming on after a cramp and chasing down Hendon Hooker on that long run. Only takes one battle to change your life. Don't miss Sanaa Lathan's directorial debut in a new movie on the come up. Now streaming exclusively on Paramount Plus rated PG-13. Meaning Gary can even watch it. Go to ParamountPlus.com to try it for free. So how about Hendon Hooker? Rick Neuheisel asked us in the open in our pregame show whether Hendon Hooker should be considered for a Heisman. All he's doing is almost throwing for 300 and running for 100 in this game. Yep. Not a bad way to do it, huh? 110 on the ground. Almost 400 total. And he's got his team. There's his mom, Wendy. He says, Mom critiques everything I do. She tells me on the end of runs, get down, don't get hit. <laughs> he doesn't listen to that. But she says, everything else. watch your feet in the pocket, square your shoulders up, do it the right way. He's doing it every way so far. And down the middle, did it again. Inside the five is Princeton Fant, the tight end. Asked him, what did he need to work on? What did he work on in the offseason? He said, fundamentals, quiet in the pocket, push with my right foot, accuracy. He's doing it all. First and goal. Maybe a yard for Jamari Small. Amari Bernie is the guy that made the stop, but they've got it at the one-yard line. So I think if Billy Napier would have heard that in the middle of the third quarter, 52 plays, he'd be happy, but boy, they're moving the ball with the 52 plays. The push to the goal line. No signal yet. Going to be down a little bit short. <laughs> Florida does a nice job of standing up number two. Are they going to take a peek at this one too? Did the football get to the line? It might have. Might have. Yeah. I think it might have. You could have back-to-back -back replays on both sides of the field here. I'd have to take a look at that if I was in the booth. Because you never know. The next one could be a fumble or snap or something. I think Josh Heupel will take a timeout if he has to because he thinks it's a touchdown. Yeah. He's going to challenge. He is. So they announce a timeout. Gene Steratore is with us. As we take a look at it, it's, it's a tough. This one's tougher to call, if you ask me, Gene, than the other one. Yeah, I agree, Brad. Yeah, and you know, and I think there, there's more bodies kind of in that rugby scrum feel as well. But I think if you watch after the initial stop, you do get that push. And although we may not see the ball from the high shot here on the wire, you can tell that that portion of the body has made it. This is a really great look from the, the opposite high end zone. I, it, I feel like he's in right by by a good half yard uh, on the play and I think Gary makes a wonderful point is listen you've got to review this play because uh, you don't know what's happening on the next snap. Yeah. That was and, him. Uh, if this the ball helmet? broken. Yes yeah. exactly. Good. I think the ball was above the line. I think it's a touchdown. Darnell Wright number 58 got that last push but you know that's why we have replay here. Right there is the best shot to Gary yep. circled it perfectly down the line. Because his hands are in front of his head and his head's in so the ball you would would think is along with him. <laughs> they keep pushing from right the there. back behind and I think they push him over the line. If that is the case it's going to be a one yard touchdown run by Jamari Small. So they finally make the announcement that they're going to review it. Billy Napier is hot over there. He just got a 50. Well, now interesting. If it's short, it's going to be a one-inch penalty. If they score, it's going to be a 15-yard penalty on the kickoff. Oh, Billy. Like the enthusiasm, but uh, when you got four of your coaches trying to hold you back from getting a penalty. 
and he is still letting the official on that side of the field know that he's there. Let's go and let's go. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes you wonder if we're using common sense that he's over, but do you actually see the football? That's the question, you know? So that could be the doubt and why it's taking so long for replay. Yeah, that was, that's why you got 15. I think we got the best look down the line that you could possibly get, right? Here's from the pylon. This can't help, can it? Don't have any idea where he is. No. We paid for those pylon things and we're using them. That's right. That right now. By golly. That's yes, right. <laughs> this is the best shot, I think. Absolutely. Man, I think it's clear. He's right there past the line. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's taken a while. I will have to say, I do not see the football at all. I think. It's underneath his arm right there, but it is called short. So maybe unless that's the rule. Unless he's carrying the ball on his back. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. Here, here we go. Oh, this is, this is a talk after the talk to the replay booth. <laughs> I wonder if this is where to assess the pental penalty. The conversation's going on. Straighten it out for us, Scott Walker. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. After the play, a sportsman like conduct on the head coach of Florida. After this is to the goal, first down. <laughs> you can't get any closer and to the goal than you are. No, are. but it also gives them a first down. That's right. It re racks. All right. So you can see where the ball is. The nose is almost touching the goal line. Let's see if they give Jabari Small another crack at it here. He's the guy that we thought had it in the end zone. Hendon Hooker may be on a quarterback sneak right here as well. Now he's going to be in the shotgun, so that's not going to happen. Small, touchdown Tennessee. I know a lot of people when it's real short yardage like this, keep the shotgun. The reason teams do it is they very rarely snap the ball to the center, and that's where a fumbled snap could. They feel more comfortable yeah. here because they don't get the quarterback center exchange in the short yardage play. Good point. So Jabari Small thought he had one uh, play ago. Now he does have one officially. Billy Napier says that cost me half the distance to the goal and 10 minutes of time for the same result. Extra point is good. So a couple of short touchdowns here in this quarter. One by Florida, now one by Jabari Small. And the balls are up 10. And in Hooker. Engineer another touchdown drive that covered 62 years uh, 62 yards speaking of years These are some of the oldest quarterbacks of note in college football and in being one of them and with that Let's ask you the Appalach trivia question. Who's the oldest winner in the Heisman Trophy history? Oldest Heisman Trophy winner, okay, think about that Gary got that one quickly. Well, yeah, because I'm old. Yeah. Because I'm old. No, yeah, I remember. That's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> so a 10-point game. Tennessee trying to snap the losing streak. That's reached five games. They've lost 16 of the last 17 to the Gators. And right now they got a double-digit advantage. This kick fielded right around the one yard line. Henderson doesn't even get to the 15 flag down as well. 
Yeah, that means that it's going to go back about to about the seven and a half yard line, right? Yep. During the return, illegal block in the back, kicking team number 13. Oh, so the kicking team. Receiving team number 13. Okay, I was going to say. To the goal, first down. <laughs> Spent too much time on the headset over there on the sideline. Yeah, he said it the wrong way, but he moved it the right way for Tennessee. Penalties again. There it was. Turn team, not the kicking team. Florida scored on three of their last four drives. Down by 10. Look at the yardage, though. 54 plays. Again, this is a team that's used to running close to 80, but the yardage, my goodness. They got a third of the game left and right. close to 500 yards. Time of possession, not a big deal when you're Tennessee's offense, the way they perform today and all year long so no, far. They, they like a lot of plays, but they prefer a lot of yards and points. They've got both right now. One so. punt in the game. Tough spot for Richardson and the Gator offense here. Down on that end of the field where it's going to get noisy here at this snap. At the four yard line. On the silent count. He's in trouble. Didn't get it to the line of scrimmage I don't think on the throw. Uh, but, but in the direction of a receiver though now so yeah. I think they're going to let him on that gets rush from the backside on the play has to retreat going to the running back oh, pretty close yeah, right, right there getting it to zipper and they'll allow that zipper was definitely in the area but heavy pressure on richardson almost forced to safety he's going to hear more of the same from the crowd down there in that end zone they're going silent count completely they're not even listening for the clap. The center is in charge. Henderson, the motion man, will keep it on the ground to try to get a little more room to work. Maybe two yards for ETN. Now it's going to be third down and loud. Went to every lineman individually. And now here's the 39. ETN. Little opening on the corner, and he's got a first down. All the way out to the 19 yard line. Big play by number seven there. So Tennessee brings in their pass rush unit. Florida says we're going to run right at it. Look at that big hole to the outside. ETN gets around, bust one tackle enough for the first down. Good play call that time by Florida. Understanding the substitution, the down and distance, the crowd noise, yep. run the ball effectively for the first down. They really needed that one and they got it. Keep it to ETN's hands again. And the freshman got, well, he did not go down apparently. He gets up, keeps going. I thought he was down after about a five yard gain, but. And that's the mechanics on the silent count is the center is controlling it. He gets tapped, but then his hand goes forward, and that's what signals it. There's the cutback by ETN, and now they blow this one dead. After that 16 yard gain. Feels the ball carrier's knee was not down. He did reach the line again for a first down. The free display is under further review. Well, that's what I was talking about. And yep. When I thought he was about to go down and kept his balance and picked up 16 yards in a first down. So now they're looking at that as well. Well, he doesn't have to go that far down to go down. I mean, he's a, you know, what is he, 5'9 running yeah. back? Those compact guys. I mean, I'm, listen, there's been some effective guys. 
Clyde Edwards-Alaire was one of them. Let's see as he runs to the outside. That wasn't the play. No, that was the first down out of the end zone. It's the next play they're reviewing. So they're rolling out the field the first down. So far we I hope the replay booth has something because we haven't seen anything yet but we're going to get it. I know we will. Here it comes. Did he land on top of him? Looked like he did them from that angle, didn't it? He thinks so. ETN that is. After further review, the ball carrier's knee was down at the 24 yard line. It'll be second and five at the 24 yard line. All right, well, we got that one straightened out, too. Took a while. No, but I, I, I assume the booth had uh, looks that we didn't see or show on that play. Take another peek. It's going to be a gain of five right there. Yep. His left knee yep, down. Yep, left knee down. That's what I thought when I called it the first time. Yeah, well, the first replay looked like he landed on his back, but we there's the one that the booth saw and made the right call. So five yard gain five still to go on second down as we are under two minutes in the third quarter. ETN has been most of this drive behind Anthony Richardson. Aquan writes in there now at tailback. Richardson pulls it out trying to get rid of it. He finally did. Somehow got it all the way to the crowd almost. Well, Anthony Richardson thought he had an RPO slant and the wide receiver is coming down to block on the play. He pulls it to throw. There's nobody to throw to. Lack of communication. Give that one again to the crowd. That's what happens when you play on the road. The communication is very difficult. Quarterback pressure came from Josh Joseph's. And Richardson just had to get rid of it. So now when they thought they had a first down a couple of downs ago, now they face third and five here. Need to get to the 30 yard line, a very close. Timeout, Florida. This is the first charge timeout of the half. With 124 remaining in the third quarter, not wanting to waste an opportunity here. Billy Napier with the clock winding down has to take a timeout. Third and five coming up when we come back. Tennessee by 10 late in the third quarter. Talked about the age of some of the quarterbacks around the country and asked you the Affleck trivia question was who's the oldest winner in Heisman Trophy history? Chris Wenke played baseball for several years before going to Florida State. So, and there he is. There he is, Chris Wenke on the right. Josh Heupel was the runner up to the Heisman. Ladanian Tomlinson and Drew Brees. That's a good, that's a good group. Yeah, right that's there. right. That's a really good group. <laughs> that was a good year. Well, third and five. Protect number one. Silent snap count. The center will control that with his arm up front as he moves it forward. The linemen see it and then he goes back. Watch. Move it forward. Tennessee brings an extra man. Richardson trying to run for the first down. Nowhere near it. Got a couple. It's fourth down. And the timing goes off to the center because of the silent count. As Ness said, five man rush this time. Stunts right into the quarterback draw that time to stop it. And now, could it be four down territory already? Ooh. The defense can't get a stop. Maybe that's what Napier's thinking. I guess so. And this is a tough spot on the man, field. There's a lot of time left in this game. 
Wow, from your own 27. Fourth and two. I might try to draw him off sides, but I don't know if I'd go for it. He is three for four, though. You give this back to Tennessee on a short field, and it could be the end of the ball game. Richardson going to go deep. And caught all the way down to the 35-yard line of Justin Shorter. Not only did they go for it fourth and short, they went long on the play. Bump and run, man to man. I'll tell you, that's about as wide open as you can be in a football game if you're a coach. Huge play on fourth down. A 39-yard pickup for Shorter. And back on the ground to Naquan Wright for about four more. I think that pretty much signals that Florida, if it's fourth and it, within six, eight yards, they're going for it the rest of the game. Yeah, apparently. Well, we're going to have a heck of a fourth quarter, that's for sure. <laughs> Some fireworks here in Knoxville today. We played three. 11th ranked Tennessee. A 10-point lead on number 20, Florida. But the Gators driving to open the fourth when we come back. Set to start the fourth quarter. On Old Depot SEC on CBS. Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. And the hometown volunteers have a 10-point lead. 31-21. Florida, though, driving right now. This drive started at their own four-yard line. Second down and six. Just outside the 30. And about a two-yard pickup on that one will bring up third down. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, Jenny Dell, Gene Steratore. Talk about pulling the stops out. I don't think they've ever done a game with this many fourth downs. Well, if it wasn't less miles, no. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will say this. He's four for five. Three of them have been passes. A couple short ones and now a long one. I mean, I think he, you're looking at the game plan the rest of the game. Tennessee knows it's four down territory as soon as Florida gets the ball. This time a run all the way for Anthony Richardson on the corner. Trayvon Flowers with the big hit, but I think he got the first down. Well, I'll tell you, both quarterbacks, Richardson's throw for other 300. They both run the ball. They've been the leading carriers, obviously leading passers, but Richardson to run the ball 14 times, Hooker 11 times, Hooker for more than 100 yards. You're talking about a quarterback-centric offense. Boy. Both of these guys are coming through. And Richardson's over 300 yards in the air, as Gary said. That's a career high for him. And he's one pass completion away from matching his career high as well. That was against... Kentucky on the ground and a big opening close to a first down Aquan Wright got about nine interesting formation that time Florida showed it a few times this time they run the stretch back they unbalance to the left side cut back to the short side wide open Wright got nine second and a yard he'll get it again and he got the first down this time so Florida moving it down the field. They got it to the 13 yard line. I feel like Tennessee is going, who are these guys? They will <laughs> not go away. Really? <laughs> we keep bombing them with knockout punches and they keep clawing back in the game. It'll be an empty backfield. Anthony Richardson. Let's see if it's his call to run again. They got strong to the right side, but they're blocking. And that's where he started to head. And the ball came out. Fumbled. Tennessee's got it. Jeremy Banks with the fumble recovery. Amari Thomas, number 21, I think, is the guy that stopped it and forced the play, though. Ness to the outside. 21 is right there to the outside. Watch him stick out his hand and force the fumble on the play. It's the last thing Florida wanted to happen there, and the ball was out. And 
Richardson with the fumble. Josh Heifel with the reaction on the sideline. Ten point lead and they've got the ball back. Fourth quarter. And it's football time in Tennessee. Cohen at the 21 right side by Zipper. Brings it. Touchdown, Florida. Takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Hendon Hooker. Touchdown, Gators. Now he's going to go deep. Got a man out there. Oh, what a catch. Diving catch by Keaton. Some of the big plays so far in this game. There's probably a few more coming up. The last one was a big play by the defense. Florida is trying to go wide on this play, but you get stopped inside by the two defensive players for Tennessee. They force the ball inside, and Thomas, number 21, gets his paw on it. The ball comes out. Turnover for Tennessee. So the volunteer offense has got it back at the 13-yard line. Playing with a double-digit lead. Florida's first miscue today, turnover-wise. And it's a costly one down in the red zone. And the last three drives have been touchdowns for Tennessee. I don't have any. What would tennis, What would Florida do? You got any strategy for them? How about stop, cover, stop this guy. How about cover and, the guy? Covering that guy. Yep. Jacob Warren, the big tight end, all the way down to the 40. Lines up as the H-back and does the wheel route. He's right here, just goes down the field. Nobody back there for Florida. Nope, another wide open receiver, another bust for the Florida defense. And another pass play of 45 yards. And now Jabari Small with both arms wrapped around that football, driving his way near the 35. He had the short touchdown pass for a touchdown. They had the long 70-yard pass to set up a touchdown, and now they just get out of trouble with a easy wheel route that uh, Florida doesn't even try to cover. Nobody got picked, just a mistake, man-to-man -man coverage. Second quarterback in Tennessee history with over 300 in the air and 100 on the ground. Josh Dobbs did it a couple of times. Went back to the air and overshot his man that time. Brew McCoy brings up third down. It's a calm, confident quarterback, isn't it? Yep. Even the look on his face. Yep. With the exception of the pain he had on his shoulder a little bit earlier in the first half. He's a cool guy. Said one of the things that Coach Hypo wanted me to be more of is a little more vocal to show my leadership. And he said, I think I've accomplished that. His play is leadership, I'll tell you that much. On third and three, rolls to run or throw. It's a run, almost a horse collar, but he's still got a first down. Amari Bernie brought him down. That was a sprint run pass option. Bernie comes from the backside. Did he do the jersey first? He did. That could have been a horse collar. Now to go back to Jamari Small. He slowed him down with the horse collar, did he not? Yep. Sh should have been called. Watch this. This is the one that slows him down. And then he makes the tackle afterwards. So Small got about six. Second down at four. Look at the quarterback numbers. Impressive on both sides. Tennessee is going up tempo. And remember, Desmond Watson, number 21, the 400 pounder is in the game. Tough to get out when a team is going tempo and you weigh 400 pounds. There's a throw out to Hyatt. Hyatt's got a first down. He would have loved to have stayed in bounds, but he didn't have much choice as Rashad Torrance made the hit. And the clock is still running. At the 15 yard line. And there's a big fella. Yes, remember in the SEC championship when Alabama used that strategy against Jordan Davis? Kind of gassed him out early in the game yeah. by going up tempo. Here they're taking advantage. Well, he doesn't even try. See the way if he tries to go off the field, Tennessee will just snap the ball quickly. Right. And they're using all the clock they can. This is about as slow as Tennessee can go <laughs> with the way they play. They just got it off with one second on the play clock, and they got it. 
Down to the five-yard line, Jalen Wright. Yeah. They go slow, but they have the option to quick snap it if they want. So they use the tempo, the threat of the tempo, to slow the game down when they want to. First and goal, just outside the four. Hooker, RPO, and down he go. Amari Bernie makes the tackle. Wanted the slant to the bottom of the left side of the Tennessee attack. Covered pretty well. Would have been better that time if Hooker would have just tossed that away on first down. So now we're approaching nine minutes. Tennessee up by ten. Almost another horse collar right there. Him down again. Same guy too, Bernie. Two in a row. His jersey's going to be a little bit <laughs> bigger around the neck by the time the game's over. Play clock winding down under five again. Second and goal, but now it's back at the eight. And this time they don't get it off. No, I think they took time out right before the snap. Tennessee did. Part of the snap. Time out. Tennessee. The second charge time out of the half. 8.43 remaining in the ball game. Billy Napier, his 20th ranked Gators, trailing by 10. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Nissan. Papa John's. Wheels up. And by Twisted Tea, hard iced tea. Eight forty-three remaining. And in Hooker today, Gary, pretty impressive, huh? Yeah, and remember early in the game on a running play, he got nicked a bit in that shoulder area, went into the tent, but then came back out on the field and delivered a ninety-nine yard drive. Remember the end of the half, that deep pass to kind of change the field position. Finished it off with the touchdown pass at the end of the half that came out with that drive at the beginning of the half. So he's been right on. Running game, passing game, the whole deal. Now to the five goes Jalen Wright. Well, maybe he got even more yeah. down to the four or three. And again, a little pushing and shoving at the end of the play. It's a must stop for this Florida defense here. They got to hold Tennessee to a field goal to stay in this football game. Down by 10, field goal makes the 13 still in the game. Jalen Wright just kept the legs driving, and then his lineman came in to give him a shove forward. They love to run the option down here in these situations. The shotgun option. From the five. Touchdown, Tennessee. Jalen Wright. Watch Hinden Hooker hand this ball off and dodge the blitz at the same time. Going to run it right up the gut. Watch him hand it off. Oh, get out of the way at the same time. And then gash it in for a touchdown. Efficient, efficient offense. Offensive coordinator Alex Goolish and Josh Heupel working together in tandem to run the ball, pass the ball, everything they wanted to do. They didn't need 80 plays today to score, did they? Nope. Extra point coming up. And it's good. Remember, this started after the Florida fumble of Anthony Richardson. On uh, this play, the recovery by Banks as that ball squirted out of there. The Tennessee offense took over at the 13. Capped a 10 play drive that covered 87 yards. Jalen Wright with the touchdown. Smokey loving it. Gary and Jenny. Thanks, Zuck. Almost the same score here. 38-21, a three-score game. Tennessee in front, just under eight to go. And 
Tennessee will take a knee, bring it out to the 25. We take it down to Jenny. Yeah, it looked like Anthony Richardson got hurt during that fumble. He went into the injury tent for about five minutes. His left shoulder was definitely bandaged up when he came out. Now, he came out to the sideline. He was stretching his neck out, looks to be incredibly uncomfortable out there. But he spoke with Napier, and he's going to go back into the game. But Jalen Kitna was warming up on the sideline, guys. Okay, Jenny, thanks. Still talking to his coach over there. You can see the tape on that shoulder underneath his pad, or underneath his jersey, I should say. Yeah, they need him right now. He's had a heck of a game with the exception of that fumble. They need all of them right now with under eight to go. Three receiver group to the right. Richardson looking back the other direction. And now he's going down. And it's to John Terry. So what's going on? Why wasn't anybody to throw the ball to? Had somebody open to the top, but it just did not seem like he was looking right. He was looking left the whole way, and Terry gets the sack. Second and 14. This time he is going to throw to the right, and a little bit high, and catchable maybe for shorter, but couldn't hold on. I can tell you, when you have a bad left shoulder or neck, it's really hard to pull and turn on those throws. The ball tends to sail on you when you're just throwing all arm. If he's at all nicked, it could be affecting these throws. You just can't get that rotation into the throw. It's probably two down territory here, even though they're deep in their own end of the field. That says it stop Billy Napier so far today so at least get some of the 14 you need on third down Richardson throws on the run and delivers a first down throw to Xavier Henderson the offensive line handles the stunting by the Tennessee rush five are up there only four come gets out of the pocket and delivers. Oh, and here we go again. Everybody but the center was on target that time. Yep. The ball still where he was holding it. All star. Offense. Number 77. Five yard fantasy. First down. Don't forget, before we're done, we'll have the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. There have been some big ones today for both teams. But right now Tennessee in command and the clock is their friend down to 645 and running. Four man rush Richardson throw sidearm over to the sideline. Had to get rid of it as the pocket was collapsing. Second and 15 coming up. Tennessee is not gambling. They're rushing four players. It's four different players all the time. So they're just rushing four, playing combo, zone combo, matchup zone, however you want to call it. They are not gambling on defense. Henderson in motion. They fake it to him. A double fake. It takes a lot of time. And now Richardson runs and gets what he can before he's run out of bounds. And there's a flag down. I would say holding on Tennessee downfield that time. You know, the flags are in the secondary. I think it was number five Haddon downfield was holding on that play. Man. Yeah, he grabbed him. Yeah, that's tripped him. Yeah. Might be a Holding good move, too. Defense number five. Ten yard Tennessee will be added to the number one and includes an automatic first down. So, first down out to the 48 once they walk it off. Hey. That's why that field goal, holding them to a field goal, was so big for that Florida offense because 
Tennessee, I mean, Florida's been moving the ball as well. The fumble really yeah. has produced the distance in the scores here. The separation was the turnover. Tennessee did it early. Florida did it late. And it's getting late on him. Six minutes to go. Richardson going deep down the middle. Got it to Shorter. Boy, that ball seemed to hang in the air a long time. Hey, you took the words right out of my mouth. Jalen McCullough, number two, the free safety, is way in the middle of the field back here. I think that's him. No, the other side. There's two of them. And the ball's floating and floating and floating, and he just can't get there on time. 39-yard pickup. So back inside the 15 of the Gators. Richardson to the end zone. Just overshot shorter. He got one hand on it. Nice time that time play by Jamal Hayden, number five. He get, had the hold on the play two plays earlier, but he undercut this throw and forced the ball to go high. Decent zone coverage would have had to be a perfect throw, right? Or shorter would have had to be yeah, taller. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen real fast. <laughs> 360, three total touchdowns, career high in completions as well with 18. Need some more though. Richardson, man in his face, throws it into the dirt. Well, defensive coordinator finally dialed up a blitz that time. He brought five, and they finally were able to put some pressure. Coming from the outside, he just sitting in the pocket. Four come outside off the slot. And the pressure was right up the middle that time by Barron, number nine. You know, it doesn't matter much if it's third down because there's going to be two downs to get what they need. Another first down would be inside the four. Coming again, bringing five. Unless they have a way to check out of it, do they? Yes, they do. Richardson to shorter. He got it to the five, but it's fourth down and two. And the clock continues to run. Well, the other ones, we were trying to figure out what he would do. This one, we know what he's going to do. Yep. So here's the ball game for the Gators. They're four out of five on the day. And they've got this one, and they've got a touchdown. Untouched. Montrell Johnson. Fourth down. They've done passes. They've done runs. They come back with a run this time. The whole arsenal has been used on fourth down. They got every fourth down play. They've used every one of them up. <laughs> they sure have. And they're going to go for two here. Which would cut it to nine. Richardson fires down the middle and hit two guys. Neither one of them held it. Had zipperer and shorter. I think it bounced off at least one of them, but it's incomplete. He would have had it, but his own guy tipped it out of the way. Zipper gets the tip. Almost impossible to catch up to that. BMC game changers. We've got two of them. We showed you Hendon Hooker last time. Now we'll show you the guy on the other side. Both of these quarterbacks over 400 yards total offense. They basically been the whole ball game. I mean, I know a lot of guys are making a lot of good plays, but without these two guys, it would be tough. A little bit of everything. Yep. Size, strength, smarts, throwing to the right guy, competing the whole way. Playing injured, both of them playing injured. Yeah, and yeah I, I, I gotta admit, I was like staring at the scoreboard trying to figure out why he went for two. I figured they'd kick the extra point, be down by 10, touchdown on a field goal. Now they gotta get the two point play involved to even tie the score, right? And that's the one they attempted yeah. and went through the hands of both guys. Right. 
And we assume we have an onside kick upcoming. I, I have to admit, I'm staring, looking at the board and going, what am I missing here? Mahalik with the onside kick, takes a big hop and right into the hands of the Volunteers near midfield. And it's Rue McCoy who had big game as a receiver and that's going to be his biggest catch of the day. <laughs> Even though he had to come that were really big. <laughs> well, Tennessee trying to snap a five game losing streak to the Gators. And they have only one win in the last 17 meetings. It would be their first 4 0 start in six, uh, in six years as well. Yeah, and, and there were a few games, though. I, I remember 2014, they had a chance to win the football game, didn't get it done. 15 was the Antonio Callaway play. Then you had the Hail Mary full of grace in 17. So they could have won four in a row. Yeah. They didn't, though. But it looks like that gigantic. Monkey on the back of Tennessee is going to be jumping off here in the next four and a half minutes. Hendon Hooker over 300 in the air, over 100 on the ground. Playing banged up. And playing as well as anybody we've seen in a long time. Coach Napier is trying to explain why it wasn't an illegal substitution. He spent a lot of time with that headlinesman over there today. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't know what he was think thinking. He was explaining something. It's a little loud. No one's left here. I'll tell you that. No, no, no one's left. There's Florida trying to get the substitutions in and out. And what I think Florida is saying is the guy they called with too many men on the field was actually the 11th guy, not the 12th guy. And I, I do think that's reviewable too. Could this go back the other direction? Well, we'll maybe get something more than a thank you. Let's see. Nope. Nope. Not even a thank you. First and five at the 46. So there was apparently 12 guys on the field. Replays confirmed that from what we understand. And first and five. Small for about three. And that allows this Tennessee offense to just milk the clock, run the ball. And we need five yards for a first down, do it. So they got four, three, four. We got five, three, four. It was 12 guys on the field. Five up front here, three linebackers. And then too many in the backfield. So the call was right. Second down at two. We approach three minutes. Florida with two timeouts remaining. And not going to be a first down this time either. Small is about a yard shy. Big Desmond Watson had him wrapped up. Again, Bill Napier's only opportunity is to stop him right here using his timeouts. So they're down to one. Well, the most passing yards today by a Tennessee quarterback against Florida since Peyton Manning of 353. And Hendon Hooker is just that close.
New on CBS, take a ride along through the thrilling streets of East New York, starring Amanda Warren, Jimmy Smits, and Richard Kind. From the producer of NYPD Blue comes a new series, East New York, premiering Sunday, October 2nd, after the Equalizer, right here on CBS. Under three minutes to go, Florida down to one timeout. Tennessee down to one yard to go on third down here. And flags fly in before the snap. That's going to be five yards back. The shift by Florida drew off All Tennessee. Stars. Offense, number 76. Five yard penalty. Go down. Talked about guys that could do with their arm and their legs what Hendon Hooker's done today. Josh Dobbs over there on the sideline. We talked about him. And the great, great hat is Josh. Yep. The great baseball hat. White jacket. He's now a Cleveland, Cleveland Brown. Brown. Yes, he is. Third down at six. Now the other way. We're going to go back. This is getting painful. It is. <laughs> Offside defense number 94. Contact in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. Tyreek Sapp jumped in. Referee Scott Walker's talked so much today, he's starting to lose his voice. So we're back to third and one. If they measured it properly both directions, we're right back where we started. Exactly. Good Lord. Again. Come on. <laughs> All these fans are staying here. <laughs> we didn't stay for this. Yeah. <laughs> Delay a game. Defense number one. Using this control trigger. Five yard first. Automatic first down. Automatic first down. Brenton Cox was calling out signals trying to get Tennessee to jump. Instead, it costs them a first down. And Florida can only stop it one more time now. Well, Billy Napier's team showed up. In, in the pregame interview with Jenny, he said, uh, our team is going to go towards the fight. We're not going to back away. They have fought. Tennessee, I think, has the better team this year, don't yeah. you? Florida had the tougher schedule to start off the year. They're 2-2. Two and two. Had Tennessee. a big win over Utah and the loss to Kentucky. And now it's going to be 0-2 in the SEC. Tennessee comes back with a bye then at LSU and then Alabama. The next uh -huh. two games. Josh Heupel's got this part of the country pretty darn excited about these guys. And they should be. The schedule's just starting for Tennessee. I mean, their crossover is Georgia. That's a tough crossover. Approaching two minutes. Second down at five. Using the clock. Winds down with one tick. They get it off to small again for a yard or so. Coming up on the college football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage. Adam and Rick and BJ will bring you the day's best highlights from a busy day in college football. Some thrilling finishes. Some more upsets possibly in the making or maybe already have been made. This won't be considered an upset other than the Florida Gator fans who were hoping that it was going to go to six straight wins over the guys in orange. Uh, Tennessee is going to be 4-0 for the first time in six years. Their number 11 ranking certainly won't be shaken at all. Might even go up into the top 10. We'll have to wait and see what happens around the rest of college football. On a day that they checkered Neyland Stadium for only the sixth time. Tennessee's going to take time its out. last time out. Tennessee. This is the third and final timeout of the half. Well, Tennessee's last win we mentioned was in 2016. Florida got off to a 21 to nothing lead in the second quarter, but the Vols would battle back with some heroics from Jawan Jennings and Josh Dobbs. 
Tennessee snapped an 11 game losing streak in that one. And that was Butch Jones team who got to lead the band in Rocky Top. So there's Josh. He was part of that one and he can celebrate with the rest of the faithful here in Knoxville when this one's over in a minute and 24 seconds. I remember that was a second half explosion for Josh Dobbs through four ran for one. Yep. Tennessee's upcoming schedule Gary just mentioned this is going to be another W here with the win over Florida then at LSU Alabama here UT Martin Kentucky Georgia not going to get any easier. Nope. Kentucky a legitimate football team. Played the top two bell cows in Alabama and Georgia. No gain on the play. And this is where in the future the 12 team playoff would really be huge right for a team like Tennessee trying to earn their way back. Got a tough schedule lose one maybe two games still getting in it as a you know 12th ranked team right. or something like that in the playoffs. So that's the last time out. What a game by that guy. Jenny talked about at halftime about the 50th anniversary of Condridge Holloway and his heroics in a nationally televised game against Georgia Tech. A hundred years ago yesterday is the first time these guys ever wore orange jerseys. Well, they're wearing orange today and uh, played very well. You know, on top of that, just remember that Tennessee will come back with Cedric Tillman, his favorite receiver. Right. Maybe one of the best combinations in all of college football, those two guys. Well, the other guys sure picked up the they slack sure today. Did. Not just him, is it? They got plenty of weapons. Brew McCoy played great. Ramal Keaton with that sensational grab on that long ball. Jalen Hyatt had another good day. McCoy went over 100 yards, but he had a 70 yarder in there. And that's part of the 348 right now for Hendon Hooker, along with his 112 on the ground. I think Florida comes out of this saying we battled and our quarterback's back for the second yeah. to finish off, get back in the SEC with a quarterback. They needed him and he came through. Hooker. Throws going to be a little bit short of the first down. Got that one to Prince and Fant. So with 111, down 11. Just watch the Cleveland Browns this last Sunday. Uh, this game ain't over. Yeah. <laughs> they would love to have a couple timeouts. That's for sure. I had to use those. Florida schedule. Now it's time for the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. And with all the brilliant plays today, this was the only miscue for Anthony Richards in the fumble recovery by Banks. And then Hendon Hooker went to work. Finds his tight end all alone down the sideline. That got him close. And this run got him the last score. And that's where we are, 38 27. But 111 to go. Richardson loads it, fires, got a man wide open at midfield, shorter. First down, Florida. Oh, and oh, gee, that crossing route took like seven seconds. No pressure on him at all. Clear across the field from one side to the other to get that open. It's a 50 yard run. 28 yard pickup. Richardson now has that one tipped. He had shorter wide open on the in route. Remember they need two scores a field goal a touchdown and two point play. Mari Thomas got a hand on that a big hand I should say. He was the one who forced the fumble on that play. By Richardson earlier. So still 54 seconds to work with. They got a score in a hurry and score again. And an onside kick in between. That's a lot to do in 54 seconds. Richardson steps up, 
Going to throw to a safety valve over here on the near side. And Bowen's got a first down. But that took a few seconds as well. 42 seconds left. Clock stops after the first down again. Gets across the line. Line up. And they got to hustle up to the ball here. Clock starts. And now they clock it. To stop it at 39 seconds. The 45 yard field goal from here. If they wanted to go field goal now and then have the Hail Marys at the end. Your first game with us was a Hail Mary. Yeah, it was. And that one was Felipe Franks on a 63 yard touchdown pass. That clock can't wind fast enough for Josh Heupel. Well, they got to keep a pass or a play short of the first down is the goal. For Tennessee. Second down at 10. Another play fake. Richardson's got plenty of time still scanning the field sidearms it. he drilled it in and they're down to the three yard line to Ricky Pearsaw. Well, you said it drill it in they're going to go up and ground the ball again. They don't need four downs. That was between everybody wasn't it. Oh they're going for it here. Can't look out can't kick a sack yep. throw it away that stops things 21 seconds. Tried to catch him napping, thinking there might be a clock play. Almost overthought it. Lucky to get rid of it. Got pressure from Byron Young again, who hit him after he threw. Neither team has a timeout left. Officials are going to take a timeout, I think. As an injured player is on the ground. Amari Thomas. Yep. Batted down a pass earlier on in the series. Had some big plays. The fumble, forced fumble earlier. One of the uh, points of emphasis when we had our meetings to the start of the season was players faking injuries. To stop the clock. Here he is. He's tired. We know that. Is he hurt? He's looking over to the bench. He'd like to come out of the game. And he says, "I, I got no gas. <laughs> My tank I got is empty. Nothing. I got nothing. Now I'm going down." Holding the back of his leg. Well, he gets his wish. At least he's coming out. He's all smiles, too. Although we did catch him. So now back to the three yard line. Second down and got to have it here soon. Empty backfield Richardson sets up fires in the middle has got it touchdown Ricky Pearsaw the guy that got him close and of course because they went for two last time they got to go for two now. Pearson the slot just goes in button hooks right there lets everybody go by him gets into the end zone. Nobody near him. So a 71 yard march that took less than a minute. Three yard touchdown pass by Anthony Richardson and now they go for two. Here with 17 seconds left. Down five. Need this to make it a field goal game. Richardson throws incomplete. Tennessee stops the two point conversion. Christian Charles number 14 in coverage to the outside stays on the play could have been caught but Charles is right there with his hand in the bread basket of the receiver does he deflect it close enough I'll tell you what that would have been a tight tough catch yeah sure would have by been. Henderson now it's onside kick and Hill Mary well, 
Well, the last onside kick was uh, one hopper to Brew McCoy. And now it's Adam Mahalik who will tee it up again. Looks like he's aiming it in the same direction. He got a late hop last time that Brew handled well. Will he do it again? Onside kick. Last chance for Florida right here. A high hop. Oh, and Florida's got it on the bounce. Black took it out of midair. The, the question is, did it go 10 yards? It's really close. Yes, it did. Yep, right at the line. And it did bounce, so he can grab it. Dewan Black, look at this play. He can't advance it, but he can get it right there. Wow. Gene Steratore is along with us. Gene, that's the ruling, right? Yeah, and it's a great play. Now, we've got to take one second off of the game clock. Uh, because it cannot be advanced, so the ball will become dead as soon as the kicking team possesses, but they'd have to take one, so the clock should be at 16 seconds, but it does, to me, go beyond the 10 yards before possessed by the kicking team. So the line of scrimmage is going to be the Gator 47. They're 53 yards away from pulling off a miraculous comeback. Going to take another one of your calls for Florida to win this one. <laughs> and all they can do right now is put themselves in position to throw the Hail Mary. Have time for about three plays. Play clock has expired. Just think, though, I mean, Listen, Napier's been aggressive all day, but if they kick the extra point twice, yep. a field goal ties the game. Right. Game clock operator, please play 16 seconds on the game clock. Okay, that's what Gene told us. So one more tick taken off is exactly the way Gene called it. And here we go at the 47. Still a prayer remaining for Florida if they can do something in this last 16 seconds. They have no timeouts. Richardson throws, completes it to Shorter, who wisely got out of bounds. Question is now, do you take two throws to the end zone or you try to gain another 10 yards? That's what Billy Napier will be deciding. Because you could get two to the end zone in 11 seconds. You only need one second for the next the last one. The first one can take 10. The last one, you only need one. We know Richardson's got the arm. That's not a problem. And boy, has he used it well today. Set to throw again. And just out of the hands of Shorter. And now there's only one really, you could throw a five yard out, but really it's going to take a Hail Mary into the end zone. It's not easy to exercise those demons of this one in 16 record is it nope it's down to this final play of the game Richardson pressured throws at the last moment and it's intercepted by the volunteers there will be no comeback Tennessee wins it There is joy on Rocky Top. The Volunteers go to 4-0, 1-0 in conference play. Florida falls to 2-2 two and two and 0-2 oh in the SEC. 
Down to Jenny Dell. All right, Coach, one of the greatest rivalries in college football. What does this one mean to both How, much, how much fun is this, man? God, I love it. Uh, kids competed. Uh, man, battled all night long. Fans were awesome. Environment's better than anything I've ever experienced. What a win. At one point, we didn't even know if Hendon Hooker was healthy enough to come in. What can you say about your quarterback's performance tonight? Yeah, he was electric all night long. Unbelievable job throwing the football. Used his speed opportunistically, man, and just competed, man. And everybody fed off his, uh, his energy on the offense side of the ball. Hell of an effort by him tonight. This is an incredible environment right now. But up next, you got LSU, you got Bama. What do you want the college football world to know about this program? It's just the beginning of this journey with these guys. But I absolutely love our football team, man. They compete really hard. They practice great. They love one another. This is college football as good as it gets, man. Rocky Top's back. Let's go. Go celebrate. Thank you. <laughs> that's one more look at that last play, the Hail Mary. The word of the day was aggressive, and Tennessee stays aggressive by rushing six. They blitz on the play. Only five men back. They're aggressive. They get to Richardson. They force the poor throw, and they take a game that got a little tighter than they thought. Kamal Haddon with the interception that capped it. And then the celebration began. And right in the middle of it, number five, Hendon Hooker. What a classic. 52nd meeting between these two, and Tennessee wins it at home, 38-33. That's going to wrap it up for Gary Daniels and Jenny Dell, Gene Steratore, our entire CBS crew. Brad Nessler saying so long from Knoxville. We'll get you back to Adam Zucker and company for the college football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage right after these messages. See you in Fayetteville next Saturday for the Hogs and the Tide.